Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Monday, June 17th council meeting. I'm going to ask Deputy Mayor Forrest to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sue, so will you call the roll, please? Mayor Lesser. Here. Deputy Mayor Forrest. Here. Councilor Bailey. Here. Councilor Carbone. Here. Councilor Clancy. Here. Councilor Durick. Here. Councilor Rhodes. Here. Councilor Timbro. Here. Councilor Zambrello. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Uh, before we start our regular business agenda, I am going to read a statement. Good evening. And thank you all for being here. Weathersfield mourns the loss of State Trooper Pelletier and sends our condolences to his family. It is absolutely heartbreaking that his wife has lost her husband and her kids will now grow up without their father. We are grateful for the service that State Trooper Pelletier gave to his state and the service of all first responders here in Weathersfield and throughout the state of Connecticut. We also mourn the loss of New Haven native and Minneapolis police officer Jamal James Mitchell, whose funeral was in New Haven today. Over the past two weeks, I've had many conversations with Wethersfield police officers, police officers around the state, and family members of officers. I spent four days, parts of four days, at the Wethersfield Police Department, reaffirming my support as well as listening and learning. I was there last Tuesday, Monday, and the Thursday and Friday before. And I was just, and I am so impressed with our Weathersfield Police Department. They're outstanding and the leadership we have is outstanding. One of the many conversation I had over the last two weeks was with a 26 year veteran from another town here in Connecticut. He asked about my support for the police. He asked about the details around what happened at our June 3rd meeting. He also told me that his family was close to the fallen officer. At the end of the call, he thanked me for the honest conversation. I thanked him for the, having the conversation and for his service. I know there was mutual respect and understanding. Our Weathersfield, our Weathersfield Town Council and the entire community stands with our police. We, as I said before, we have excellent leadership in our department and outstanding officers. As we soon begin our public comments, I ask that everyone be respectful and listen to one, one another. As far as the flag policy, the council will be reviewing our flag policy in an upcoming meeting. Finally, I love our town and I'm grateful for the privilege given to me by the people of Wethersfield to be your mayor. I also know that you all love Wethersfield too and I look forward to working with everyone and to continue moving this wonderful town forward. At this point, I will go on with the regular meeting agenda. We do have a proclamation, and then we will get into our public hearings and public comment. The proclamation is about Juneteenth, and I will read it. Whereas Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day, Juneteenth National Independence or in Emancipation Day, is the oldest known cel celebration of the end of slavery in the United States. It's a day to remember the sacrifices of our ancestors, reflect on the legacy of slavery, and celebrate the resilience of those who fought for our freedom. Whereas President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, declaring that slaves in Confederate territory are now free, paving the way for the passage of the 13th Amendment, which formally abolished slavery in the United States of America. And whereas word about the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation was delayed some two and a half uh, two and a half years to June 19th, 1865, in reaching authorities and African Americans in the South and Southwestern U United States. And whereas June 19th has a special meaning to African Americans, it's called Juneteenth, combining the words June and 19th, and has been celebrated by the African American community for over 150 years. Now, therefore, I, Ken Lesser, Mayor of the Town of Wethersfield, on behalf of our Town Council, do hereby recognize Juneteenth, observed on the 19th day 
uh, of June 24 and observe and urge all citizens to become more aware of the significance of this celebration in African American history and the heritage of our nation. In witness whereof I here, here to set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed today, the 17th day of June. We will now move on to our public hearings, C-1, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, both C-1 and C-2 were introduced at the last council meeting. These are both grants um, that are for part of being a certified local government. Uh, we're now eligible for these grants, and this is for the historic preservation of the old academy building um, down on Main Street in Old Weathersfield. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on that uh, property, and we did some initial um, structural assessments, and they recommended that we do full architecturals to move forward at the next phase. We've also uh, recently just completed the roof um, on that building. We still need to do the cupola and some other things, but then interior and some exterior work, that's what this is for. These two grants would help fund that. Um, there is a match on one of them, but the other one is, uh, is a no match grant. And we are just looking for your approval later on in this agenda. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Can we take both hearing items as I believe together? you can do them both together. It's okay. basically the same project, just different pots of money. I'm gonna open this up to the public first. Uh, is there a council comment? At the, for the next later on in the agenda. agenda. Okay, so does anybody from the public want to speak about this particular <laughs> agenda item? <laughs> I did not think so. So I'm going to close the public hearing and now I'm going to move on to public comment. Okay, I'm going to read what I normally read. I also have a um, sign up sheet and I'll be calling the names from the list. Right now we have about 37, 38 folks. Um, and I will read the first few names. But before I do that, during the public comment period, members of the public will have five minutes to speak on any issue. We have a lighted timer at the podium to help each speaker be aware of the time remaining for them to address the council. When you step up to the podium, please state your name and address. And at that point, the green light will come on showing your five minutes has begun. The yellow light will come on when you have one minute left. At this time, please begin to wrap up your comments. The red light will come on when you have reached the five minute limit and are asked to complete your comments. After speaking, we ask you either to return to your seat or exit council chamber so the next person may speak. If you did not have a seat in the chamber prior to speaking, please exit the council chambers and continue to your previous seat or exit the building. I ask that you address your comments to the entire council and refrain from speaking directly to or about a council member or to the audience. I ask that you refrain from any derogatory comments or personal attacks and please remain respectful. This section is for public comment and the council will generally not engage in dialogue during this portion of the agenda. If there is any follow-up needed, please leave your contact information with the town clerk and the town manager will follow up with you. At this time, we will open public comment and I'm gonna read the first few names. Uh, Debbie Carton, Chris Brecklin, Elizabeth Keyes, and Rob Pelletier. Those are the first four names. My name is Debbie Tanook Garten, 15 Carriage Hill Drive. I am the mother of fallen officer, Detective Robert Barbie Garten. He was killed in the line of duty on September 6, 2023. But he is still very much part of this community as he is laid to rest in the village cemetery in Old Weathersfield. I understand that you may have your own viewpoints and policies, but I wanna share a few of my thoughts with you. Was this issue mishandled? without a doubt. Does this council and this town of Weathersfield support the law enforcement com community? Of course, we all do. We could have, you could have postponed the vote, done some research, because there actually are two support law enforcement, law enforcement community flags, and reconvened on Tuesday morning. I feel you all have missed the point of this flag request, which has caused a world of hurt to me, a lifelong resident of this town for 60 years, my family, residents of Weathersfield and the law enforcement community at large. The impact of this council's action is immeasurable. When the Pelletier family was mourning the loss of Trooper First Class Aaron Pelletier, some council members chose to appear on television and in essence, I feel embarrassed themselves in the town of Weathersfield. 
It was disheartening to witness the news coverage and hear the disrespectful and hurtful remarks made by some town council members, especially as the wake and funeral for Trooper First Class Pelletier was going on. I thank the Weathersfield Police Department for holding their response and comments until after Trooper First Class Pelletier was laid to rest. Given the tragic circumstances, making an ex exception to the, your policy would have had to been appropriate. Unfortunately, that did not happen and we find ourselves here today. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day, and that week as National Police Week. My family and I recently witnessed our son's name being unveiled on the National Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, D.C. on Mother's Day. Over 23,000 officers' names who had died in the line of duty from 1786 to present are carved on these walls. His name was also unveiled on the Connecticut Law Enforcement Memorial in Meriden the following week. I would highly encourage everybody to go to the Memorial in Meriden. It's right off of 91. While in Washington, D.C., we saw both blue line flags proudly waving in honor of all the officers who have died in the line of duty. Even the National Organization of Concerns of Police Survivors, which I am now one of, utilizes the flags and its symbols in their merchandise. Beyond, beyond honoring fallen officers, the blue line flag supports families. They show that they are not alone in their grief and that there is a network of individuals who understand and empathize with our pain. This flag symbolizes a united community that offers comfort, compassion, and assistance to all those who have experienced this unimaginable loss. The thin blue line holds a deeply personal meaning for me as a tribute to my son's service and sacrifice. It symbolizes his honor, his strength, and his remembrance for all he stood for, representing the bond between fallen officers, their families, and the broader law enforcement community. While the flag cannot erase the pain or fill the void that left, has been left by Bobby's absence, it is a powerful reminder that his sacrifice will never be forgotten. It represents, represents society's gratitude, respect for the men and women who have put their lives on the line for the greater good. It symbolizes solidarity, reminding us to support and uplift the families of fallen officers and ensuring that they are not left behind or forgotten. Therefore, I formally request that the town of Wethersfield raise the police flag, either the black flag with a blue stripe or the American flag with a blue line, for two weeks in May 2025. The first week will be for National Police Week and the following week for the Connecticut Police Memorial Ceremony. As a tribute to my son, Detective Robert Bobby Garten and Trooper First Class Officer Pelletier and all officers who have lost a life in the line of duty. It is the least that we can do to show your gratitude and support. I want to thank the town of Weathersfield and all the police supporters who have flown their flag, turned on their blue light, displayed their never forget Bobby signs and support the police signs. Thank you for your continued support of our family for over the last nine months. We feel your love and support. To the Pelletier family, our family is grieving with you. Our hearts are with you. And we extend our deepest sympathies for the loss of Trooper First Class Pelletier. And to Bobby, Trooper First Class Pelletier, Officer Mitchell, and all fallen officers of Connecticut and across this great country, may your bravery and sacrifice never be forgotten. Rest in peace. We'll take it from here. Thank you, Debbie. The next speaker is Christopher Brecklin. Good evening. You're going to hear from Excuse me, Chris, name uh, and address, Christopher please, Brecklin, 27 Somerset Street. You're going to hear from some angry people tonight. I think, you know, a lot of people are hurt, and 
I think we have as a community a lot of reflecting that we need to do and some really tough conversations that we need to have. I want to thank every officer and all of their families for the sacrifices that they make. You're also going to hear from a lot of people who are incredibly frustrated by the controversy that this has created for the town. I do think that multiple things should be considered and that just because we didn't fly a specific flag does not mean we don't support the police. If that was true, you can look at every other town in Connecticut and you would have to say that no towns support police because none of them flew that flag at their town hall. If our neighbors want to see who really supports the police, they just have to look at which council members voted to increase the budget for our police department and which ones voted against that part of the budget. If this was about honoring an officer, a less controversial symbol could have been chosen, could have been offered, and was, but wasn't acceptable to the proponents and as a result triggered a controversy when many people didn't think there was one at all. And I think we all saw that there is and there are some conversations we need to have. Between May 30 and June 3rd, there was plenty of time to get that proposal on an agenda before town council and to give proper public notice so people could show up here and have a conversation about it. Instead, the proposal was used as a surprise to catch the council off guard and denied res Weathersfield residents of the transparency we expect of our leaders. This was a shameful political move that took right, medical. This was a shameful political move that took media attention away from Trooper Pelletier's remembrance and his family. You may also hear from folks tonight that this hyper controvert, this hyper local controversy made national and international news and was a stain on the town's reputation, when in reality, most of the people in 2024 live in their own filter bubble and they never heard this story. A filter bubble is a state of digital isolation that leads us to highly personalized news and information that mostly confirms our existing worldview. Other than a few selectively edited local stories, the national news came from the New York Post and the Daily Mail tabloids and affiliates of Fox News, which isn't known for its fact-based reporting. Libs of TikTok, a far-right anti-LGBT hate group, pinned it to their Twitter page and used it as a platform to encourage hateful threats and messages to town councilors. None of these are respected news platforms and all of them are instruments of spin and hateful rhetoric. Most people don't get their news from Laura Ingram, so I think the broader reputation of the town is safe. What I find very concerning is about the last couple of weeks is the way that people have been treating their neighbors. Incomplete, inaccurate, and false reporting statements by the town council um, led hundreds of messages and even death threats. This seems to be part of a national trend, one in which hundreds of local public officials around the country are reporting facing increasing threats and harassment. We need to be able to have civil conversations and even disagreements with our neighbors, and I'm sorry that some of you have been dealing with so much hate. Lastly, we need to realize that the culture wars consuming national politics have no business in Weathersfield. The culture wars are designed to be a giant distraction from a lack of leadership and a lack of ideas by certain politicians. Don't let a loud minority of people, many of whom don't even live in Weathersfield, distract you from our crumbling schools and our economic development needs. Those are the real issues that voters elected you to address. You were elected by an average margin of 500 votes. The real majority that elected you want a welcoming and inclusive town, so stay strong, stay focused on our work that residents can see and experience in their lives, move past this culture war nonsense, and thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Chris. We have Liz Keys, Rob Pelletier, Christina Sala. I'm gonna ask everybody to remain respectful. Please name an address. 
Hello, oh, Elizabeth Keys, 119 Dix Road. So I was here for the council meeting four weeks ago and there was a discussion about having police officers stationed here uh, during meetings and whether that was necessary. And I noted that in all my years of being involved in state and local government, I have never sadly seen such divisiveness and that unfortunately a lot of the rhetoric we have seen in our national politics has made our way down to the state and local level. And I'm sorry because I did not mean to foretell the future with those comments. I have a profound appreciation for all of you. I sincerely thank you all for your service to our residents. You are volunteers. You are using your free time to work to make this town a better place for everyone who lives here. And it absolutely breaks my heart that anyone would threaten violence against a member of the Wethersfield Town Council. Such tactics are antithetical to representative democracy at any level, as they are designed to scare officials out of taking certain policy positions, constrain their ability to interact freely with their constituents, and make them less willing to continue in public service. Threats of political violence should be unequivocally, unequivocally condemned by every person in this room. And in my conversations that I've had with people in town over the last two weeks, that has been one of the recurring themes. Everyone I have spoken with has been horrified that people would threaten our town council members and their families. The other recurring theme I've heard is that our neighbors cannot comprehend why this was not a reasonable and rational conversation within our own community. People cannot understand why such a serious topic was brought forward unexpectedly without notice to the entire council. Such notice would have created space for a reasoned, thoughtful discussion as to how to honor Trooper Pelletier, Officer Garden, and all of our fallen heroes. It is clear from the video of that meeting that everyone was on board with doing so. We should absolutely find a way to honor those who give their lives in service to the community. And we should do it in a way that is solemn, unifying, and does not generate disheartening controversy. Instead of reasoned conversations, misinformation about our town was needlessly splashed across ultra right-wing accounts on Twitter, the New York Post, and the Daily Mail. But the truth was the debate wasn't whether to honor Trooper Pelletier. Everyone agreed that we should do that. The debate was how best to do it, and that all got lost. The discussion about how Weathersfield should recognize fallen heroes should have properly taken place within this community, but instead it was happening on Fox News. I hope we can move forward from this with unity and purpose. I absolutely think we should find a way to honor those like Trooper Pelletier that give their lives in service to the community, and I think we should find a way to bring, that brings us all together, not divides us. Thank you all for all your time and what you do for our town. And I know there are many law enforcement officials here. And thank you a million times over for your professionalism and resilience in the face of this controversy and for your bravery and for your family's bravery. Thank you all so much. Bob Pelletier, followed by Christine Lucella and John Porcello. And I apologize if I get anyone's name mixed up in the pronunciation. But um, Rob Pelletier, followed by Christine Lucella and John Porcello. Good evening. Robert Pelletier, 31 Belcher Road, Weathersfield, Connecticut. 
I know this is off topic, but it's something that's very concerning with Weathersfield at the time. As you know, we're in a very precarious situation. We have been serving the town for almost 70 years and we are now fighting for our lives. We have recently given Aetna proposals to continue here, but have been denied all proposals and all estimates for staying here in town. In fact, they literally want us to go away. We have done our due diligence with no results from the town or Aetna. We have implemented, we have implemented a tri-town initiative with Rocky Hill and Newington for advanced level life support with no support from the town. We are looking for ARPA funding to initiate this. ARPA funding was initiated during the pandemic, which we did ask, we asked for nothing except for CPR um, help. Uh, we, we denied all other help. This funding is imperative to us because it will not only keep us running, but it won't cost the taxpayers a dime. We've been serving this town for free for almost 70 years and would like to continue, continue doing so. We have to pay the town for rent for our building, which they own. We have to pay for our fuel. We have to pay for our staff. We have to pay for our maintenance. We have to pay for our supplies, which all comes out of our own pocket. ARPA funding will allow us to continue serving the town of Wethersfield at no, no cost to the residents. That is our plan. This is our end goal, to continue servicing the town with high quality emergency medical services at no cost. It is unfortunate that Aetna does not want to negotiate. We have always had a great relationship with them. They have always served us well and they are tremendous human beings. My greatest hope is that we can continue to serve the town of Wethersfield. I grew up here. I live here. I know people by name. I have family here. Biz big business has no right dictating what we can do for our population. My father served as a police officer and detective in this town. My grandfather was the first police detective in the city of Hartford. I have very strong ties with Wethersfield. I graduated here. I live here. I serve here. This funding will allow us to do what we have done for 70 years. If the town of Wethersfield does not want to assist us, that is fine. They have not done that, they have not done that for a while. I just hope that we can survive as long as we've survived. I just hope that the right thing is done, not just for us, but for the towns around us that are in the same situation that we are, getting shut down by big business. We have all one goal, to give our residents the best service we can, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's making millions or who's making nothing, as long as we can serve and protect our community to the best of our ability. We will overcome this with the love and support of our town. We will survive. And on a side note, I just want to say that the law enforcement in this town is a big part of my life. I work with them every day. They are tremendous human beings. They help. They are personable. They are reasonable. They are tremendous people. And if you don't want to fly a flag for them, guess what? We did. Thank you, Rob. I have Christine Rosella, John Porcello, and Irene Ruchin as the next three. Christine. Hi, I'm Christine Kelly Lasella, 37 Belmont Street here in Wethersfield. Uh, first, the Garten family, Deb and Bob and your son and your grandsons and your daughter-in-law, my heart is still with you. You are strong and courageous people and Bobby is smiling and he's with you. I, I'm, I just have nothing but love. Councilor Bailey, I'm very happy to see you here. When I spoke to you all back in February, I asked you not to change the flag policy. I honestly, uh-oh, something's moving. These microphones are moving. Yikes. Um, I'm sorry. I honestly thought that it would open up our town for lawsuits because, as I said, everybody has a cause. Some of those flags could be controversial. I would like to add, bef before I continue speaking, an apology to our veterans, all of our veterans, especially the ones who spoke that evening in February. I apologize for not even considering your feelings and expressing that when I spoke, the effect that this policy might have on all of you. 
I spoke, and then I listened, and I heard you all. I heard you, and I wish our council had. So at the May 6th meeting, a list of nine flags to be approved is on the agenda. During public comment, a nice man, Mr. Woodward, asked about flying the UN flag. So when it came time to vote, Jane Rhodes asked about the UN flag. Procedure was brought up about how there had to be notice for a flag to be flown. But wait, there is a way, Ken Lester said, an, an amendment can be made to the existing slate. So while the council votes on the original nine flags, the motion failed as all councilors voted nay. Cindy Clancy motions to add the UN flag for October 24th, 2024. Jane Roach seconded the motion. It passed seven to one to zero. Bailey was a nay. Meeting continues, several votes to amend the motion, and voila, the UN flag is added, just like that, and approved. The UN flag comes with some controversy. I guess nobody knew that. Some of its policies, ideology, equality of representation, administration, and its ability to enforce rulings as well as ideological bias. I'm not saying I agree with that, but some people might think that. I'm using this for comparison. June 1st, Councilor Bailey comes, asks about flying the thin blue flag to honor Trooper First Class Pelletier, who, by the way, when he left for work that morning on May 30th, 2024, he wasn't planning to be killed in the line of duty. You all voted against this, and procedure was one reason. And then there it was. This flag represents, quote unquote, racism and antagonism to many, to many, as the UN flag might. I refer to the UN flag because that could also be controversy. The American flag was flown and waved at the attack on the Capitol, which disgusted me. So this isn't about Democrat, Republican for me to be very clear, okay? They waved the American flag, it's still here. Thank you. Oh, I get so mad, I'm sorry. My grandfather was an FBI agent. My oldest son is a corrections officer for the state of Connecticut. I briefly worked for Department of Corrections in the state of Connecticut. So I have many lifelong friends that are in law enforcement. I have many friends that are police officers, either current or retired in Weathershield and beyond. Not one of them has shared with me that the thin blue line flag would be controversial. Maybe you should have just flown the flag for a day, 24 hours, it would have been done over with. Perpetuation of a negative feeling isn't the way to solve and change it. There are two cities that have banned the thin blue line flag, Los Angeles, California, and a college in Madison, Wisconsin. It's called University of Wisconsin, Madison. There are 50 cities that have banned the pride flag. I'm not saying I agree with that, I'm sharing information, facts. I encourage you to avoid this in the future. You should have stayed with a policy that was there. For the town to allow certain groups to fly and not others doesn't maintain or confirm neutrality. None of you are qualified to be the all-in decision makers. Check your egos, your personal agenda, and your insecurities as a door when you come sit up there. On that note, I continue to say that we should have a PIO for the town so that when you all speak, it's based on fact. Amy Bellow stated that the pride flag was lowered to honor TFC Pelletier. It was not. The state of Connecticut mandated that every town in Connecticut mandate means told them to fly the flag at half staff. So the pride flag had to go down either way. It wasn't a choice. Weatherfield doesn't get credit. Um, I'm running out of time. So I think you need a PIO and you need a social media policy because the disparagement, the attempt of disparaging another council member by another council member was disgusting. A 35 year veteran of the Weatherfield Fire Department, 10 years as a chief, oh wait, an employee of the Physical Services Department. While we're all sleeping, that guy, Rich Bailey, is out there making sure we're all safe. He's gone two weeks without sleeping when the tornado came. Every snowstorm, everything and the smirks aren't necessary. No, he does not owe anybody an apology. There is somebody who doesn't owe an apology and maybe he showed his true colors, but either way, shame on you and shame on those of us who voted because 
I voted for, for that person. And to watch somebody, the town council shouldn't be able to disparage each other Christina, or members of the community. Wrap up, please. So sure I encourage you, PIO and a social media policy. For God's sake, for all of you to sit there and have allowed that to be published, the hell with the First Amendment right. He represents this town. And he has done nothing but represent this town. And, 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 and you guys got to start listening and hearing people, not just each other. Personal opinion doesn't matter. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> so hold on one second. So John Porcel, Irene Ruchin, I then have Thomas Reagan Lefebvre and Joe Skelly as the next four. So please proceed. Hi, John Poriello, 322 Silas Dean Highway, and also the spokesman for Safe Streets Connecticut, which is a grassroots organization that supports the police and also lobbies for increased accountability for repeat juvenile criminals. What happened here in Wethersfield, I'm quite frankly ashamed of and um, embarrassed by. What is the thin blue line flag? It's a gesture of respect for the police. According to the majority of the Wethersfield Town Council, this flag somehow represents all that is wrong with society, including white supremacy. This is a grossly misinformed view. The majority of council members have become victims of the misinformation narrative against the police. For Deputy Mayor Forrest to rely on an open source website, Wikipedia, for accurate information is quite frankly ridiculous. This is not to say that once respectable news sources like the New York Times and PBS do not also have a cop-hating agenda, they in fact continue to display their agenda against the police in their biased and untruthful reporting. For our mayor, Matt Lesser, to defer his leadership to what other towns have done is not leadership, it is cowardly. Even the American flag has been misused and yet it's still present here today. Either hatred of the police or ignorance born from believing non-factual propaganda that negatively portrays police as the enemy of the people versus what they actually are, the first line of defense for innocent citizens in a civil society I don't understand your, your, your logic. Trooper Pelletier did not have the courtesy to provide the town council with the 30 days notice of his death so the town council could have de debated this topic. Given the displays of ignorance and hatred toward the police by the majority, I do not believe 30 days notice would have resulted in a different vote by the members voting in favor. I cannot step over the hypocrisy of this particular set of counselors for, that for the first time insists on a police officer to be in attendance at every council meeting. Why? Maybe because in their wor world, words are violence. Words are words. Deal with them or resign your position. Since you do not deserve to hold office if you are afraid of words of opposition. There is no reason why my tax dollars should be wasted because of your feeble insecurities. I suspect that after this meeting, the majority might even call for more police presence, all the while hating everything the police stand for. What a bunch of hypocrites. You, the majority, stepped right into the woke bear trap set by the media and your party intended to divide us. Genuine leadership steps above the misinformation. It is time for the Democrats on this council to step up in their leadership and unite behind our police and the rule of law. The cop-hating agenda is a cancer on society and needs to be eradicated. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Thank you John. We have... Um, Thank you. Yep, Irene, then Thomas Reagan Lefebvre, then uh, Joe Skelly, and Dwight Henderson. Again, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Irene, please proceed. 
I'm a little bit nervous being up here. Uh, yeah, please, your name and address. I Irene Ruchon, 21 Park Avenue in Wethersfield. The governor made his announcement to lower the flag on the 31st. I think your council meeting was on June 3rd. And I'm, I just kind of have some questions. When did it occur to you that to make the suggestion to fly the blue line flag? It didn't come up when you did the policy in February? Uh, did you even call the town manager to see if we have a flag? Uh, if you, the meeting was June 3rd and he was being buried on the 5th, how long was this flag going to fly? Because the governor wanted the flags at half mass until sunset the day of the funeral. So there's not much time there. I don't even know if Wethersfield owns that flag. Is it only supposed to fly in one place? We have American flags at many public locations. So I don't quite understand how you expected this to happen. Um, I wouldn't want to imply that um, you couldn't get it on the agenda and you deliberately wanted to surprise people. However, I sometimes wonder. But I choose not to believe that because that would be callous and that would be an insult to this police officer. Now on the flag. I'm not a member of the police community. I don't know people intimately. I do respect the police and I fully support them. I don't know how the town council voting to fly an American flag in not this one all of a sudden leap to, we disrespect the family, we disrespect the flag, the blue line flag, and we hate police. I don't understand the connection. It's a little bit too much for me. I don't know how a group ended up on Facebook with 150 supporters overnight. It just doesn't happen. And quite frankly, for me, the blue line flag does not represent me. When I know that there is an officer who died unnecessarily, I want him to have the same respect that American flag shows. I watched that flag come down when J.F. Kennedy died. I watched that flag come down for a number of governors and other people. There is no higher honor. That stands for valor, appreciation, justice, and many other things. I did a quick survey of people in my group that I hang with. Several live in town. They've noticed the police support signs and that they don't know why they're there. If I saw a blue line flag flying, I wouldn't know why it was up there. If I see that old glory flying, I stop and I wonder who of significance died and how many families are hurting unnecessarily, because we lost someone. So I have a request for you. I want to know what we can do so, to support our police. Uh-oh. <laughs> do we need to get them all bulletproof vests? How do we protect them on a traffic stop? What can you do to get the state to do more about drunk driving or driving under the influence? That's the problem. I want to, I, I'm shocked to see so many police at this meeting. And to know that there have been death threats, I just, I don't understand that. And I choose to believe that they come from out of state because I don't believe any of my neighbors would stoop that low. We do not need to provide more work for our police. We need to support them and respect them when we lose them. I can't imagine what it's like, but I know what it's like. When I was watching the funeral of that officer in New Haven, it was that old glory that was covering his casket. There is nothing higher than that, and these men deserve that. Thank you, Irene. Thomas Reagan, the favorite, and Joe Skelly, please. Uh, good evening. Uh, Thomas Regan Lefebvre, 89 Gallon Street. Can you spell that again? My apologies. Uh, Thomas Regan Lefebvre, or Lefebvre, 89 Gallon Street. 
So Mr. Mario, uh, member of the council. Uh, first of all, I would like to pay tribute to Trooper Aaron Pelletier. His death is an unspeakable tragedy reminding, reminding us of the inherent dangers faced by state police officers daily. It also reminds us of how awfully dangerous our roads are. With over 42,000 fatalities in 2022, we are at the very bottom of road safety among developed countries. Actually, according to, according to data collected by the World Health Organization, we are below than that. There are more road fatalities per capita in the US than in countries like Indonesia, Egypt, Turkey, and Chile. On June 3rd, a 19 month old girl was killed by a driver in Hartford on New Britain Avenue. On June 12th, a worker was killed on West Boulevard, also in Hartford. So far, 34 pedestrians and cyclists have been murdered by drivers this year alone in Connecticut. And we are just at week 24. These tragedies must stop. I fully support the effort of the town council to make our roads and streets safer. Now I'd like to say a few words about the flag controversy. Yes, I do appreciate that the thin blue line has a very long history. However, it appears that the thin blue line flag was created, uh, at least the one incorporated into a black and white flag, pretty recently. It's a creation. It's actually trademarked. You're not allowed to use the design of the black and white flag, US flag with a blue line without a licensing agreement with a company called the Thin Blue Line USA. So who is behind this commercial creation? Well, it was designed by a guy called Andrew Jacob. Mr. Jacob's company made millions from these uh, thin blue line flags. And what prompted Mr. Jacob to create this particular flag in 2014? Well, it turned out that Mr. Jacob was upset. He was upset at the protest against law enforcement in 2014. And what were these protests about? What were these protesters chanting? They were chanting, I can't breathe, which were the last words of Eric Garner killed by a New York police officer. Mr. Jacker was so upset with US citizens showing outrage at the killing of 12-year-old 12 12-year-old 12 Tamir Rice and of 18-year-old Michael Brown, all black people. This is the true origin of the blue thin line flag, not the sugar-coated fairy tale narrative presented by some. And that does not negate the fact that many see this flag as a genuine support for law enforcement, and people and those folks are clearly offended by its obsession with white supremacist ideas. However, to ignore this history is disingenuous. To call this flag non-partisan, non-partisan, sorry, is politically disingenuous. The decision of the council was the right one. And I extend my sympathy to the members of the council who have been harassed who have received death threats. You have a mandate, a very strong mandate, as Chris said, and I want to encourage you to stay strong and keep the excellent work that you are doing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Thomas. I have the next, thank you, Thomas. The next three speakers are Joe Skelly, Dwight Henderson, and Jeff Rhodes. Good, good evening, uh, Joe Skelly, 50 Summerfield Drive, Wethersfield, Connecticut. Um, I joined the Democratic Party, I don't know, 50 years ago, and last week I resigned my membership. Um, I had been thinking, I had been thinking of doing this for actually several years because the current Democratic Party and its principles are nothing like the principles when I joined the Democratic Party in the 1970s. The council's rejection of uh, the, flag, the flag for Trooper Pelletier's funeral was the last straw. In the 1950s, the thin blue line term was adopted by law enforcement agencies to recognize police officers' courage and sacrifices while protecting our citizens. In 2014, the thin blue line flag was created in response to a number of police officers killed in the line of duty. The thin blue line flag in Wethersfield should stand for the support of its police officers, nothing more and nothing less. Council Member Bailey proposed approval of this flag for the sole reason of honoring Trooper Pelletier and his family on the day of his funeral. The flag was to be flown for one day, a single day, and it was rejected. Um, 
the Democratic majority's rejection of it has made our town look ridiculous. Uh, for one of the Democrats to say it was offensive to, or racist or offensive to a certain segment of the community was short-sighted and insulting to say the least. The council's actions were offen offensive to our police and people like me who support the police. And it is people like us who vote. Um, good luck to you Democrats on the next election because you will not have my vote. And for some of the Democrats to state the request was against the policy because it was not made 30 days before was laughable. This was not a state statute or an ordinance. It was a policy. You could have amended the policy on the floor to make an exception for this. It could have been legally waived because it would have been difficult for the proponent of the resolution uh, to provide 30 days notice when no one knew Trooper Pelletier was going to die 30 days before his funeral. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jill. I have Dwight and then Jeff Rotes and then Robin Barrasso. Dwight, you're up next. Uh, Dwight Henderson, 33 Mill Street, Weathersfield. Good evening. My name is Dwight Henderson. Um, first and foremost, thank you to all the police officers here tonight, the town council. Uh, I'm a uh, resident of Weathersfield, a Marine combat veteran, and I was an ICU nurse to the front lines of COVID, taking care of the six COVID patients. And I say all that to say that I understand sacrifice. I understand what it means to have honor and integrity and the importance of those words and those meanings. Um, and I think it's important to honor the sacrifice of uh, police trooper first class Aaron Pelletier. And I believe he, he was honored with the flying of the American flag at half staff, which is the tribute that we give to all heroes, all American heroes. Um, you know, most of what this is about is the controversy around the thin blue line flag, which was requested to be flown and the town council uh, decided not to go forward with it. And I'm in support of that decision. Um, unfortunately, the flag has ties uh, to the far right extremism. It was flown in Charlottesville, Virginia during the Unite the Right rally rose quickly to prominence in 2014 uh, as a reaction to protests around the death of young black men. Um, and unfortunately, the thin blue line has an us versus them mentality immediately. You know, that term did not start in the 1950s. That term actually dates all the way back into the 1800s. It was actually originally the thin red line, which is a term for the British soldiers in the Crimea War. It was later adopted by other professions and eventually by police in the 1920s in New York and then used as the name of a television show in the 1950s where it really came to prominence. And it's always been, unfortunately, an us versus them. Thin blue line or thin red line is a war statement. Citizens of Weathersfield are not enemy combatants. They're members of the community just as the police are, and that's how we should work together. We should be looking to come together, not apart. Um, and I think, unfortunately, given the history of this flag, that does cause divisiveness, as seen right now, currently. Um, so I support the town council, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Dwight. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Rhodes next, then Robin Barrasso, and then uh, I have Kristen Moreno after that. Jeff? Jeff Rhodes, 69 State Street. My name is Jeff Rhodes. I live at 69 State Street. Said that already. And while I've lived in Weathersfield for only three years, I have taught American literature, journalism, rhetoric, and composition at WHS for 29 years. I'm here tonight as a proud citizen of this town, and also as the proud spouse of an elected town councilwoman. I have long believed that national political rhetoric and issues have little to do with local politics and policy, with potholes and zoning issues. So you can imagine my disbelief over the last few weeks as I've been proven very, very naive and wrong. As the husband of Jane Valler Rhodes, I have watched her struggle these past weeks with hateful, violent, vulgar, and frankly terrifying texts, emails, and posts, all because she voted on a local flag policy. I myself received an anonymous phone call from a man in Clearwater, Florida, who thought it appropriate to curse my wife, her beliefs, her very person, her very existence, for reasons that were unclear to him and even more unclear to me. In almost three decades of teaching the youth of Weathersfield, I've posted a number of slogans on the walls of my classroom. Words of instruction, wisdom, I hope, several students are in this room, you can tell me later. <laughs> Encouragement, silliness, poetry, all those things. 
The first large banner I taped to my wall in 1995 was this, language is power, written in all caps. Beyond simply justifying why they needed to be in an English class, I was trying to help kids see an obvious truth. Language is powerful and a route to power. Words well chosen and delivered have the power to persuade, to encourage, to indoctrinate, to enlighten, to enrage, and to pacify. Despite what we tell small children, words can hurt and heal. Social media has changed the scope of language and its power with the speed with which it can be shared. We need to do better. The second banner I've taped to my walls is resist binary thinking. This is less a slogan than a thought exercise. In binary thinking, there's only two options, good and bad, right and wrong, us and them, love and hate. Binary thinking simplifies life and ideas using the language of dogma and propaganda. Real life is not binary. Real life happens in the middle, happens with nuance, with a recognition that very few concepts are limited to only two perspectives or options. For example, someone may have an I support the police sign on their lawn and also fly a pride flag. These are not oppositional ideas. Nuance is where real people live their lives and nuance needs to be considered in order to have any understanding of each other. Looking for nuance allows us to have conversations. I have many friends and former students on the police force in Weathersfield. Having conversations with them have allowed me to understand what the flag means to those people. Unfortunately, we can't control what a symbol means to every single person. Nuance. We need to do better. The most important banner I have on my classroom walls is also the only phrase I've ever considered getting a tattoo of, and it's check yourself. This is arguably the most important thought exercise of them all, and it springs from the first two. It demands a constant reminder to self-edit, to not necessarily believe what you think. It demands that you ask yourself honest questions and seek honest answers constantly. It asks you to seek nuance, to trust that human beings are complicated and contradictory. It asks you to play devil's advocate with yourself. It asks you to consider, what do I believe? Why do I believe that? What do I know? How can I verify what I know? Great Ronald Reagan line right there, trust but verify. How can I most accurately and honestly share what I learn? My students get it. For all of our concern of the anxious generation, the students were more concerned about adult responses to this particular debacle than they were of anything else. They believe that check yourself is how adults should think, how adults should act. They are in fact confused when the world shows them otherwise. The kids are all right. We need to do better. We can be better. Thank you. D'Angelo, and again, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Robin, you may proceed. Robin Barasa, 248 Dale Road. Good evening. I was here a couple weeks ago um, at the last council meeting when it was actually a pretty quiet and peaceful meeting when Councilman Bailey presented his request. I didn't think it was unreasonable then. I still don't think it's unreasonable. To say I'm disappointed and slightly disillusioned by the council majority is an understatement. A better word would be actually be insulted. Insulted on behalf of fallen police officers and personally insulted by some of the words that this council used to attack people that su support the flag and the police. What should have been a simple act of kindness and honor turned into the word that you got, some of you use frequently the past couple weeks, turned into hatred. This flag, the thin blue line, has been around a lot longer than the past four years. Just because many of you believe it represents, and I quote, hatred, antagonism, racism, white supremacy, I'm sure there were a couple other words I've forgotten, does not mean the rest of us also believe that. We didn't believe it then, and we don't believe it now. Since 2020, there has been a huge uptick in law enforcement assaults, attacks, and murders. Intelligent, well-researched people like all of you sitting up here cannot denounce those facts. FBI data 
as of May 2024, has reported that from 2021 to 2023 alone, more officers were, and I quote, feloniously killed, 194 in two years to be exact. More in the, in the past three years, more in this three-year period than in the past 20 years. The rate of assaults is at a 10-year high with 79,000 attacks recorded. These are facts from the FBI, not Wikipedia. So I ask you, if a flag can show support, comfort, and honor for our own town's law enforcement, our state law enforcement, for our fallen policemen and women, how could you have voted no? Better yet, how do you accept protection from the very organization that you cannot even support publicly? Some people have said Weathersfield should be ashamed of itself. That isn't a fair statement or observation. We love our town, all of us do. But the people that voted no and abstain against raising this flag for one day are the ones that maybe should be ashamed because police lives do really matter. Thank, thank you, thank you, Robin. I have Kristen Moreno, Janet Delgado, and Mark Rudowitz. And I ask that you step away a little bit from the mic in the overflow room, which is in the library. They're having a little bit trouble uh, hearing you. So I think a little bit away from the mic would be good. Please, please proceed. My name is Kristen Moreno and I live at 20 Somerset Street. Not only am I a resident of Weathersfield, but I am a close family member of fallen first trooper first class Aaron Pelletier. It is extremely disheartening to be a part of a community headed by a town council who could not for one day put aside politics and policies to have honored one of the most dedicated members of the Connecticut State Police who was taken from us so tragically on May 30th. Aaron served on Troop H, which included Weathersfield in his jurisdiction, which makes the situation even more upsetting. Because of him, other state troopers, and our own Weathersfield Police Department keeping you safe day after day, you all have the privilege to be alive to discuss and speech, speak such absurdities regarding the thin blue line flag. In what way would such a tragedy be in alignment with a 30-day flag raising policy? He lost his life suddenly and tragically serving the people of Connecticut as he proudly did every day. But we didn't honor him in this town because the, his death didn't occur with enough notice. If you can sleep at night thinking that rationale is appropriate, shame on you. But even more disturbing were the misguided comments from unreliable sources claiming that raising the thin blue line flag is racist and would cause antagonism and hate. Well, look at the outcome not raising the flag caused the antagonism and hate you were so worried about while also making a mockery nationwide of the town we live in. I hope you too feel ashamed for making such ridiculous and inappropriate statements during a time when so many were and are still grieving. And when you needed to rely on Weathersfield Police to ensure your safety in recent weeks from controversies you caused, I hope you felt embarrassed making that call because despite your disregard for their never-ending sacrifice, they still showed up for you. The beginning and end of the discussion on Monday, June 3rd, should have been in direct relation to Aaron and honoring his service to all of us as a Connecticut State Trooper. No one else's feelings should have been considered. To those of you who voted no or abstained, you disrespected the people closest to this tragedy to appease people who you thought would be hurt by the sight of a flag. Well, guess who's hurting more? Dominique, who no longer has a husband, and Troy and Zachary, who no longer have a father coming home to them. They should have been who you were concerned with by offending by your vote, not those lucky enough to be unrelated to the matter. I hope you all learned a valuable lesson from this and have realized it's not always about policies and politics. There are real people behind these decisions. Your future actions will show your sincerity to these matters, and if another family does have to endure such tragedy, I truly hope the outcome is different. 
to those of you who proposed, advocated for, and supported the thin blue line to be flown, I thank you. Tonight, I'll leave you with this quote. For those untouched by tragedy, who've never felt the shiver of a final call, held the hand of a mourning police family, or grappled with the cons constant what-ifs that haunt every officer's loved ones, acknowledge your fortune. The weight of these realities is immense, and recognizing this is the first step toward truly valuing the sacrifices made by law enforcement every day. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Kristen. Um, I have Janet Delgado, Mark Rudowitz, and then it uh, looks like David Forsano again. Apologize if I get anybody's name wrong. Janet, you, you're up next. Please proceed. Um, it's Janet D'Angelo. Uh, yes, and I apologize if I pronounce it wrong. Janet, yes. D'Angelo, yes. right. It's yeah. 102 Merriman Road in Weathersville, of course. So um, I just, I think it's been addressed a little bit already with some other people that did come up to speak um, that Councilman Bailey did try to propose to have the flag flown. Unfortunately, there wasn't the policy time in order to get that in there. But there was also a comment made on Facebook by a councilman that said, he voted against the thin blue line flag and the responders flag. And that isn't necessarily true. And I'd like that clarified if I'm wrong. But I was given some information that it was a group of flags and everything was into one big group. It wasn't just this flag you're voting against or for, or this flag, it was a group of flags. And he did not vote for that group of flags because there was probably a flag he thought didn't belong in there. And if I'm wrong about that, I'd like to know because that's the information uh, that I was given. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't speak uh, Take your time. Uh, publicly. So I wanted to ask about that and if someone could get some information that was put on Facebook clarified that it, that's what he actually voted against, not the single thin blue line flag or the responders flag, the first responders flag. Also, there's a qu request that's now been put in to fly that flag. Um, I don't know how the outcome is gonna be any different because the council is not gonna be represented any differently when that gets voted on. Unless, of course, you surprise the other people that live in Wethersfield that also count that also have a feeling about what they want to see in their town. I have a feeling, I have a lot of people I know that are in the law enforcement family. My son was a police officer. My daughter is a detective in another police department. I have so much respect for what they do because we personally, people who are related to people in law enforcement, know what they go through. And we know what happens to them and it's not just something that's visible, they might smile, but you don't know what's going on up here after everything they've seen in the years that they've seen terrible things that none of us would ever wanna look at. So that's part of it too. You're also giving them the credit and the due that they deserve to say we respect you and we know what it does to you personally. We know what it does to your life and your family so that's, that's part of the respect that this flag, that we see it as, not as, as something that's racist or something that is derogatory, because it's not. That's been, that's been repeated by people who don't have respect for that flag, because they want people to believe that that's what that is, and it's not. So I'd like to see how that vote is gonna come out any differently now that a request has been put in 30 days in advance to fly the flag, and if the same people are voting on it, we're not gonna see it. But I, I want you to know that if we don't see it, you're slapping the face of many people that live in this town that would like to see it, and we're being disparaged, we're being discriminated against that our thoughts and our feelings and our tax dollars that we pay in this town mightily 
don't count and that we don't matter. Everybody should matter. Pride flag, any flag that is representative of love and togetherness and something that is a positive for a lot of people should be considered, not just no because they think some people say it's racist. Not everybody feels that way. And they may not be the majority on this council, but they're the majority in a lot of places that people seem to think it's not the majority. I think calling the flag racist was a despicable thing for anyone to say. So I want to know who's going to represent me. I want to know who's going to represent who, who I am here in this town and my feelings, because I count too. And I care about this town, and I want to be represented here. I feel like I'm not. I feel like I don't even belong here anymore. So if you change the policy, and I know my time is out, if you change the policy to go back to the way it was, I also would like to know if that's so that you can get out of having to fly it. So we're gonna, all going to be what? watching and I hope that you include us and in how we feel because we are residents of Wethersfield and we care about our police officers anywhere, whether it's state or city, nationwide. So think about how we feel as well, not just your own personal feelings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Janet. I have uh, the next few Mark Rudowitz, again, David Perrano, Janet Vassell. Hello, Mark. Please proceed. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Rudowitz, Six Timber Trail here in town. I'm a, also a United States Marine Corps veteran. <clears throat> um, first of all, I've heard some controversy about uh, this flag. Then I've heard about some policy controversy. Well. First of all, the thin blue, you, you, folks, you should have flown that flag for one day. It was requested by the Republican Town Council for one day. It, it would have been over. You wouldn't have had two, 300 people here. However, um, I don't know if you're really, and I know some of you are misinformed. I really believe some of you are really misinformed about that thin blue flag and law enforcement. I think some of you were sold a bag of goods. But I know there's some of you here, and I'm not going to call out names, but you know who you are, um, who really honestly do spew vitriol and hatred and disdain for the law enforcement community. So with that said, you know what that, that the thin blue line is? It represents law officers. It's in honor of them. And with that badge, every one of these men and women here in uniform, the, that badge represents the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Same thing that politicians are here to supposed to honor. So with that said, and I find this ironic, and I'll be brief, I find this ironic with uh, some of you, because with all this vitriol and hatred, um, I see multiple officers here. And, and why are they here? They're here to make sure that you're safe, they're make sure you're, we're all safe. And every one of these men and women right here, the same people that many of you, I honestly believe, are, are wolves in sheep clothing here with these apologies. Um, uh, every one of them would give their life and, and do what they can to render each one and every one of you safe, and all of us. So we should honor that. The other thing I, with this, I'm not sure what the policy is on this, which are flag policy. I say abolish it, do it away. You know what, um, maybe a case by case, but I understand there's controversy because every person would want this flag flown, that flag flown, but you know what, in this case, the flag should have been flown. I heard some 20 day, 30 day, you know, I'll just leave it with this. I don't think Connecticut State Trooper Aaron Pelletier or we had a, uh, our own officer, homegrown, and it comes from a law enforcement family, Detective Robert Garten. I don't think either one of them had it in their calendar or their date book to make notifications prior to an untimely death. So we should honor these men and women here in law enforcement. And, and I'll say this with all the first responders, you know. So with that said, I hope you change this policy. And, and sin sincerely, honor and support your, your men and women here in uniform. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. I 
have David, uh, then Janet Vassell, and then Dan O'Connor. So David, and I, again, I, I can't really read, Poriano, Pori, Pori, David? I'm gonna go to the next one and we'll have time for David if he comes back. So Janet, then Dan O'Connor, and then I have Anastasia. Not, some of these names, I, I can't read the last name, but. <coughs> oh, okay. So Janet, please proceed. Hi, I'm Janet Vassell, 44 Rutledge Road. Um, I'm here to read a statement from former Donna Hemmen. She has emailed council members her statement. Um, I did bring some copies just in case anyone did not have it. Uh, Donna Hemmen is out of state and could not come in but asked that someone read her statement. Donna Hemmen lives at 315 Garden Street in Weathersfield. Former mayor from 2009 to 2013. As a lifelong resident and one who served the town for 22 years, I am disappointed and embarrassed by what has happened at, ju at the June 3rd council meeting. A law enforcement community suffered a tragic loss of the state trooper Aaron Pelletier in a hit and run accident a few days before this meeting. Councilor Rich Bailey requested a simple thin, a simple thing, excuse me, to fly the thin blue line flag. By the way, that's what it's called, not that flag. It's called the thin blue line flag. On Wednesday, June 5th, the day of the funeral of Trooper Pelletier in honor of his service and pay tribute. As a former mayor and a retired RN, I do understand policy and what it means and why it was developed. Since your role as council is, set, is to set policy, only you can change it. One-time policy exceptions have been made. This group should realize that it has already happened since the policy was amended. It would have been easy to make the statement such as, we will grant this exception now and refer the policy back for further discussion about necessary changes. Discussion would have ensued and vote taken. The council was elected by voting by the voting public and that requires you as counselors to listen to your constituents, all 26,000 plus. Remember, you serve the whole community, not just a few select. As I said, when I began, I am disappointed and embarrassed. As mayor, I did bend the rule related to the public comment. However, that was out of respect to the speakers who came to share their thoughts. They thought three minutes that they, excuse me, if they went to three minutes or a complete thought was to listen to them. It was not liked, but it was to build respect. Remember, it is not all about you. It is the community you, res you represent. Submitted by Donna Hemmen to be read at the June 17th meeting as I am out of state. I just wanted to say something on my own. Um, as a former Board of Ed member, I was driving home from work listening to this former meeting on the radio, on my YouTube car dash. And as a former head of Mimi, Board of Ed member, I was shocked that a deputy mayor, a lawyer by day, is coding Wikipedia. I'm sorry. I've never called you out for anything, but I'm sorry I'm calling you out for that. Your mom is a former teacher. <laughs> she must have croaked when she saw that or heard it, because that was just so disappointing. You were on the Board of Ed. That is the one site that we tell students never to use in elementary school, middle school, high school, and even college. So for you to sit there and openly open your phone and read it word for word, I was shocked. Sorry. 
I was offended by the mayor that you couldn't even say the name of the flag. So many posts on social media, I kept saying, it's not that flag, it's the thin blue flag. But you kept calling it that flag because it, like, it, in, it insinuated that you were insulted by the name of the flag. That's how I took it. So I just want to let you know. As far as what's insulting, hanging, what's, what anyone feels insults them, one can say the POW flag insults them. One can say the Connecticut flag insults them. But that doesn't speak for all of us. I think you were wrong, Emily. Thank you. Robert Hyde is uh, replacing someone there, Bob Woodward. So Dan, Robert, and Bob is the next three. Dan. Thank you, Dan O'Connor, 49 Broad Street. Uh, before I begin, I would like to offer a heartfelt apology on behalf of the people in Wethersfield who care for the Gartners and the Pelletier family. You won't get that apology from the majority of the people up here but I served in this town for many years, and you're getting it from me and a lot of supporters in this room. I'm ashamed about what my town has done, and my heart goes out to you. And I will say Bobby's name, because it deserves to be said. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to give you a little lesson in political hypocrisy. Everything I'm about to state is factual, and I would encourage everybody to feel free to Google on YouTube the council meetings where these comments came out and asked the town clerk to provide the minutes where they were all recorded. I wouldn't encourage you to go to Wikipedia to find them. In 2020, during the height of COVID, in the early days of virtual Zoom meetings, a Republican council was overheard on a hot mic not offensive, nor insulting. A negative comment about the budget Three former Democrat mayors, deputy mayors, and Democrat counselors, some of the same ones that are up here, sitting on this very council chambers, demanded his resignation, saying it was in the best interest of the town of Wethersfield, and that if he were, here, if he were to continue to serve, it would be a distraction, and it would undermine the ability to govern. I will repeat their words, not mine. It will be a distraction. It will undermine the council's ability to govern. How do I know this? Well, simple. I was the counselor that was appointed to replace him. Now, let's fast forward four years. Five Democrat counselors, through no one's actions but their own, have divided this town, have pitted neighbor against neighbor, citizens against the police, and have made our beautiful town a statewide embarrassment, a national laughingstock, and an international embarrassment. These counselors' actions have caused a divide we may never recover from. So my question to each of you who voted no is will you follow your own advice and do as you demanded a Republican counselor do because it's in the best interest of the town? <laughs> or will you apply a double standard and as a result effectively undermine your ability to govern? Actions have consequences. There has been no public apology or even a remote sign of remorse. In fact, a day later, you doubled down and referred to the flag as representing hate, bigotry, and white supremacy. Those are your words, not mine. I always wondered if one of the people storming the Capitol were carrying an Irish flag or an Italian flag or a pride flag, would those flags suddenly become hate flags now? No. I don't think so. You all made a choice and you chose wrong. Rather than own what you did, you doubled down and went on the offensive. You put politics over people, you pretended it was a policy, but ultimately you pushed a woke agenda over all of us. That's not leading, that's pushing an agenda. During the election cycle of 2023, each of you campaigned on bringing civility back to the town. Some of you spoke intently about uniting parties and bridging gaps. Councillor Dirk was quoted in Wethersfield Life saying he was all about building consensus. So let's talk about that. The last council of which I was a member 
was represented by a group of people who mutually respected each other. Yes, we disagreed, but we aired those in public in these chambers and debated them sometimes at nauseum. What we never did, though, was disrespect each other. In my 30 years of public involvement, I have never seen a counselor take to social media to attack another counselor. It just wasn't done. In fact, Mayor Lesser and Deputy Mayor Forrest, your comments at the end of 2023 session talked about how well we all got along. And that was true. And I recall vividly when an angry resident shouted out an insult at me during a council meeting, it was two Democrats, Mayor Lesser and Deputy Mayor Forrest, who came to my defense and jumped on the person and told him to basically shut his mouth. That wasn't partisanship. That was how we governed. That's how we built consensus. And that's how we were able to get things done. Councilor Dirk's comments were appalling. Never mind the fact that they weren't even accurate. All they did was further the divide. If you want to build consensus and start healing, then follow your own advice. The advice you gave a Republican counselor so as to move the town forward. And Councilor Dirk, you should resign twice. Robert Hyde. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing tonight? Sorry that we're in this uh, situation. Robert, just for the record, your name and address, please. Yes, sir. Robert Finley Hyde, 7 Pheasant Lane, We Talk, Connecticut. Simsbury. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming out today. It's an honor to stand before you in this great town where community values and the spirit of togetherness have always been the backbone of your strength. Today I want to talk about something that lies at the heart of our society. Support for the men and women who serve our, our community. Our police officers, firefighters, and first responders put their lives on the line every day to ensure our safety and uphold the rule of law. These brave individuals embody the values of courage, dedication, and selflessness. They respond to our calls for help, often facing dangerous and unpredictable situations. And they do so with a sense of duty and honor, and it is truly commendable. Thank you all. We owe them our unwavering support. When we back the blue, we are not only showing our gratitude, but also affirming our commitment to, the state, to a safe and orderly society. We must ensure they have the resources, training, and respect they deserve to do their jobs effectively. This means investing in their continued education and training, providing them with the best equipment, and ensuring their mental and physical well-being is taken care of. It is also crucial that we foster a culture of respect and appreciation for our law, law enforcement. These men and women are not just officers, they are our neighbors, friends, and family members. They attend our community events, their children go to school with ours, and they share in the same hopes and dreams for a peaceful and prosperous future. Let's make it clear that we stand with our law enforcement, appreciating their sacrifices and acknowledging their essential role in our daily lives. At the same time, I want to address the growing concern over certain ideologies and agendas that threaten to undermine the fabric of our society. There is a push to impose so-called woke agendas that seek to divide us by focusing on our differences rather than our common values and shared humanity. While it is essential to recognize and address injustice, we must, must do so in a way that unites us rather than divides us. Our community thrives on unity, mutual respect, and common sense. Let's reject any attempts to polarize us with extreme ideologies. Instead, let's focus on what brings us together, our love for our families, our commitment to our neighbors, and our shared goals of creating better, safer, and more prosperous community for all. Consider this, when we focus on our shared goals and values, 
we find strength in our diversity. Each of us brings unique perspectives and talents that, when combined, create a stronger, more vibrant community. It is this unity and diversity that has always been our nation's greatest strength. As we move forward, let us reaffirm our dedication to the principles that have always guided us, respect for another, support for our law enforcement, and a commitment to common sense values. Together we can build a future where everyone feels safe, respected, and valued. We must ensure that our policies reflect these values and that our actions demonstrate our commitment to each other. In closing, I want to pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. Their bravery and dedication will never be forgotten. May Trooper Pelletier rest in peace. His service and sacrifice are a stark reminder of the high cost of our safety and our freedom. And we must honor his memory by supporting those who continue to serve. Thank you for your time, and may we continue to work together to keep our community safer and united. God bless you all, and God bless America. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, I have Bob Woodward, then Matthew Corey, and uh, looks like Michael Geshkorian, and then Mike Barasa is the next four. So, Bob Woodward. Thank you, and I am not here to speak about flags tonight. I want to go back to something that was said at the last council meeting which I watched on television. Someone got up and spoke about the survey that is going out from the Board of Ed and said, we heard all about the roof, I assume, at Highcrest School and it was, there's buckets and there's mold and on and on. This was nothing new. This was exactly what was said when we had the public hearing on the 169 million bond issue. It was nothing new that was said that this survey found out. Somebody subsequently to that sent me a copy of the well-hidden 2018 report to the school board which has a list of what the elementary schools need. Every other elementary school in the town needs roofs. Somebody that last meeting at the end said, doesn't the town have a roof, a roof inspector? Let's get somebody out there and find out what's going on. I have a 23 plus year old roof and I'm getting hassles from, my in from any insurance company and I think Mr. Presley knows the business well. Do we have insurance on these roofs? You know, I'm getting hassles on a 23-year-old roof, which I think is in good shape, but we're going to get that straightened out. Let's get this checked out. The other thing the person said was HVAC. In early November, or December, either 2021 or 2022, a woman stood up here and spoke on behalf of her grandchild who was at Emerson Williams and said she's freezing in the winter and roasting in the warmer months they need HVAC and there's a grant available and nobody did anything about it and that's not on you that's on the Board of Ed. When you in this past December had the HVAC grant for the middle school I stood up and said don't we have other schools that need HVAC? But nobody had provided anything, so only the middle school got it. According to the 2018 report, every elementary school in town needs HVAC. When are we going to see some grants? Or are we just going to let these schools fall apart so that we have, to, we have to have a referendum to build five or six new elementary schools, which I cannot afford to contribute to. I need a roof on my house. Let's get something done, and if it means removing leadership down at the Board of Ed or, or the paid leadership, then do it. And let's get some people who will be responsible 
to what our school system needs. In 2018, we could have had a Mr. wealth Thank of you, Bob. I'm just going to ask you to summarize. Okay, I am. In 2018, we had a wealth of repairs that would have cost us $31 million. I hate to think what it's all going to cost us now. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, Matthew Corey, is Matthew here? And then Michael, and then Mike Barasa, Michael Kashkorian. I can apologize if I mispronounce your name. Matthew? Matthew Corey, 181 Center Street, Manchester, Connecticut. Uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. Uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to the Pelletier family, and the Garten family, and all law enforcement who sacrifice, and first responders who sacrifice every day to keep us all safe. Uh, my grandfather was a part of law enforcement in the early 1900s in a small town of Maine. And my brother's a retired state trooper who had the honor to run Troop H and had the honor to serve with Trooper Pelletier. Uh, my issues here are with the representation of the thin blue line flag. That means a lot to, to the law enforcement community. I stand by it. I understand that the American flag should be flown at half mass for our brave men and women who do sacrifice, whether it's military or law enforcement. Uh, my issues with elected officials who should hold themselves to a higher standard in any community, in any position that you hold, words have meanings and words can divide communities. So even if the Pelletier family had that 30-day notice to give the town of Wethersfield to fly that flag, to know that some elected officials would walk out of this town council and look at that flag and feel how they feel, how that would represent, it's just unfair to the brave women of, of law enforcement and our first responders. I won't take up any more of your time. I just want to thank the Wethersfield Police Department the fire department and all of us, the military men and women who are us, United States Navy veteran who keep us safe each and every day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. I have Michael. Uh, Michael, I'm a, it's G A S H. Looks like G O R I N. Left. Left. Okay. My apologies on the name. I have Mike Barassa, then I have Matt Lacavoli, and then I have Michael Kelly. So Mike. Good evening, Mike Barassa, 248 Dale Road, Wethersfield. You know, listening to everybody, on both sides, the one thing that everyone admitted to was the United States flag was the most powerful flag. How we came about this was the change of the flag policy. You, the Democrat Council said early on in their campaign and when they became councilmen, they had 27,000 bosses. We know that's not true and you don't believe it because the majority in this town did not want to change to the policy. The flags that were in place covered everybody and the new pol policy has caused division. With that being said, you voted to change the policy but only allow flags you support apparently. <clears throat> Before public comments, Mayor Lesser reads a statement on all comments should be respectful, not to be inflammatory, and addressed to the council. I'd like to address the comments made by one of the councilmen made on social media. They were disgusting and juvenile at best. I have never seen another council member attack another council person publicly before. His attack on Councilman Bailey was pathetic. Not one thing in the past meeting did any of the Republicans say negatively attacked any other council person. I'm not sure how long councilman, this councilman has lived in this town, but he should at least get to know Councilman Bailey. As he is one of the nicest people I know, his service to this town should be commended 
he would give the shirt off his back to help anyone in this town. But there is no need for an apology as Council Bailey has already forgiven you, as this is the type of person he is. I keep hearing the thin blue line was declined because of policy and procedure. Councilman Bailey brought up the issue to change the agenda, which is allowed. Mayor Lesser asked for a vote who was in favor of changing the agenda and have a discussion. Every councilman voted in favor to discuss. If policy was the real issue, it should have been declined right at that point. I have written several policies and procedures over the years, and I can't tell you how many times we have given a one-time exception and amended the policy. This consistently happens in the beginning as you always forget to add something to the policy. That could have easily been done, but to hide behind policy as the issue, in my opinion, is a joke. The issue that bothered me most is why the Democrat interpretation or feelings about a certain flag override a Republican who may interpret or have different feelings about a certain flag. It shouldn't come down to who is in the majority to determine the outcome. Every organization, occupation, and so forth have bad people. For every flag that was approved, I can cite negativity on what someone did or said. It doesn't represent all of the people. I have issues with the comments from Deputy Mayor Forrest, citing Wikipedia. I feel this was done intentionally to stir the pot even more. It is taught in elementary schools that students are not to cite Wikipedia as the source cannot be trusted. Deputy Mayor Forrest is an educated, educated attorney and should know better. So I de decided to look up the word cowardice in Wikipedia. Cowardice is a trait with wherein excessive fear prevents an individual from taking a risk or facing danger. It is the opposite of courage. As a label, cowardice indicates a failure of character in the face of a challenge. One who succumbs to cowardice is known as a coward. There is a pattern with the deputy mayor. He misses key votes, such as Kaisia Farm, raising the taxes, and takes a pass on the thin blue line pet flag. I'm not saying he is a coward but he must really want to be the mayor of this town for not voting. For everyone else on the Democrat council that showed up and cast your vote, I respect that you took a stance. But I also disagree with you politically. Actions speak louder than words and the Democrat party in this town has always shown they do not support the police. So just own it. For years, you have to, Mike, I'm going to ask you to summarize, please. Yes, yeah, I got less than a minute. Okay. For years, they have called the police racist, and they were racial profiling people when pulling them over. Very hard to tell someone what they look like 50 yards away with tinted windows. Um, <clears throat> when we had a rally to support the police, not one Democrat politician showed up. We also talked about put, earlier in the year putting a police oversight committee. So Mayor Lesser... We had conversations before the election. Please be the mayor that you told me you were gonna be. Please be the leader I thought you would be. And please stop taking marching orders from the Democrat Town Committee Chair and be your own person. please proceed. My name is Matt Lacavoli, 894 Ridge Road, and obviously I'm here to speak tonight on the current issue that has embroiled our town. I'll be very brief. Despite everything that has recently unfolded, I support every councilor up here for doing what they see as fit and for voicing their thoughts and opinions. You are all volunteering your time, and I appreciate that. Despite the outside noise, my hope is that we can all come to an understanding and realize that there is so much more that unites us than divides us. I also want to point out that despite what is being said about them, 
Ken, Mickey, Jane, Matt, Emily, and Cindy are not anti-police in any way, shape, or form. I know them. The vote that happened at the last meeting was not their yes or no vote on police. The motion was confusing, poorly explained, and sprung on them with no plan or background knowledge. This council, this entire council, respects and appreciates and works well with our town's police department, and no flag is going to prove or disprove that. Council, Mayor Lesser, you have my support, and I thank you all for your contributions to Weathersfield. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. I have uh, Michael Kelly, Cindy Zerblis, and Mary Zambrello as the next three, please. Michael Kelly. Michael Kelly, 193 Garden Street. Good evening. I stand before you disgusted with some of those we have elected to represent the citizens of this town. Rather than represent us, some of you have chosen to use your elected platforms as activists for social causes, while others were so spineless as to hide behind policy, as if exceptions are unheard of and unprecedented. You have spread misinformation and used your hatred of those you perceive to be your enemy as an excuse to refuse to honor a hero that served the people of our state. As Bill Maher recently said, when you hate people, you don't listen to them. In February of this year, you decided to change our town flag policy. The previous policy was uncontroversial and left no room for misinterpretation of the intent of the flags being flown on town property. That wasn't good enough for the activists our town was fooled into voting for as they decided they needed an outlet for government speech, a way for them to virtue signal how good of a person they are. Well, fair enough. So long as the majority party on the council remains unbiased in approving what flag is flown, which only took four months to prove they're incapable of doing. The last town council meeting, Councillor Bailey, moved by the death of Trooper First Class Aaron Pelletier, made a good faith proposal to raise the, the thin blue line flag for one day to show support and solidarity with the law enforcement community, of which many live right here in town. Let me tell you what would have happened if you had done the right thing, swallowed your personal feelings, and approved flying the flag for a single day. Nothing. It would have been noticed by a few keen-eyed individuals driving by and maybe made the local news as a positive story of solidarity between government and law enforcement, who you expect to enforce your laws and protect your buildings. You might have received a couple of messages or angry Facebook comments from your fellow far left progressive friends. The reaction would have been nothing like what we're seeing now. You've made yourselves and this town a national embarrassment. Mr. Forrest, as soon as Mr. Bailey started speaking, your body language said it all. You needed to find any excuse to say no, knowing that the far left progressives who have invaded the Democratic Party would never allow this. Even after doing your research on and spreading misinformation from Wikipedia, you still lack the spine to cast a vote in favor or against, instead opting to abstain. As for your poor research, I remember in school when writing a paper, you would be chastised by your teachers, if not given an automatic F for that assignment, if you dared use Wikip Wikipedia as a source. I'm inclined to do the same. For your poor effort and use of Wikipedia at the last council meeting, I give you an F. The phrase, the thin blue line, evolved from an old British battle formation, and it has evolved over the years throughout the 20th century as a recognition of the police officers who stand between peace and society's descent into violence and chaos. The thin blue line is a symbol that honors all law enforcement personnel. We began to see the thin blue line flag as we know it today after the shooting of two St. Louis area police officers in 2014. It could also be seen after the ambush that killed five Dallas police officers and injured seven more in 2016 and after two police officers were shot in Ferguson in 2020. The founder of the company, Thin Blue Line USA, which is credited with creating the actual flag that we know today, has disavowed any use of the flag for racial or political reasons. He says the flag has no association with racism, hatred, or bigotry, 
It's a flag to show support for law enforcement, no politics involved. If the standard we're going with is that a minority of hateful individuals co-opted this symbol, therefore we cannot use it, then we better go outside right now and take down the American flag because that must also be a racist symbol as it was being flown at these rallies on January 6th that you speak of. Mr. Durek, not willing to use the progressives' talking points and insulting accusations of racism, you instead opted to hide behind the policy itself, unwilling to make an exception for the unexpected tragic death of a state trooper. I'm sorry if his death was inconvenient for you and your precious policy. In the future, we will request a 30 days notice prior to someone passing away. Michael, I'm gonna ask you to summarize, please. Uh, can I reserve the right to speak at the end? I'll conclude then. Thank you. Sambrello and Alexandra Slaney. And again, I apologize for mispronouncing anyone's name. Cindy? Good evening, Cindy Servalis, 119 2 Red Highway. First of all, I want to say to Bobby's mom, thank you for sharing with us what the Cindy Lou Lion flag means to you and your family. I, you know, my heart goes out to you. My son is sitting in the row right behind you, and I can't even imagine as a mom. I can't. So obviously tonight I'm here to talk about um, the decision that the Democratic Council members made to not fly the thin blue line in honor of um, Trooper First Class Aaron Pelletier. And um, the behavior of some of the uh, council members in the aftermath. Uh, the narrative of the flag the Democratic Council is pushing is untrue and inaccurate. I'm not gonna waste my time here explaining because we've all seen the 5,000 Facebook posts this past week, and I'm, obviously we've heard a lot of speakers tonight on it. My only message to the council members is just please stop. Stop saying that. Y'all sound, sound ignorant when you say it. You do. Next, I, I'd like to talk about how our officers, who are all standing here in the chambers tonight protecting you all, um, how um, they were requested to um, be in front of your homes for protection. Protection from what the town manager stated to the press, that these threats were coming from out of state, not in town. Um, so last week, me as a resident, I put up a survey on, online, just trying to get the post, you know, to feel like what, what is, you know, what is people really thinking because people were saying, and an innocent survey went up there. Well, some of the results that came back to, to um, us, I found them threatening. And I'm gonna tell you something, they were threatening by, by residents that were probably sitting in this room right now. They were personal towards me. And some of the things that were written would not have been things that someone from North Dakota would know about. So, I don't know, I'm looking at this room and I'm thinking, who in here said it? I might think it's that guy in the second row that just yelled at two women that were chatting. But um, where's my protection? Where's my protection? I didn't have the police at my house. I didn't have the police at my house. Just, just throwing that out there. Um, you, 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 all, you, you all reported to the news acting like victims. You all reported to the news acting like victims. And, and I just want to point out too, just throwing this out there, when you, when you use that victim mentality, that's the sign of a narcissist. So I just want to point that out to you. Just thought I'd, I'd bring that out to you. Um, next, I I'd like to address the behavior of the councilman um, that attacked uh, Councilman Bailey. First off, let me say there are many of us that were born and raised in this town, and you are not one of them. He has made, the, the, this Rich Bailey has made many friends in this town, and, and we all respect him. And I had a 40 year probably relationship with Rich, and I have found him to be the most caring, giving person that I ever, 
ever met in my life. My husband joined the firefighters. He said, Cindy, don't worry. I got your, got your husband's back. And boy, has he had my husband's back. He's a, he is a lovely man. And, and how you ripped him up online, he gave his life to this town. When we were in high school, he started volunteering for the volunteer fire department in high school. And he has spent his life working for this town. As Christine said earlier, in the middle of the night getting out of bed, he's been saving lives. What have you done for this town but cause us chaos in the last two weeks? You owe this guy an apology. You owe him an apology, huge apology. Yeah, a public apology. Thank you, whoever said that. He, I, I'm, I'm so upset about it. I really, really am. Because I'm going to just, I'm going to say this. The, the days after all this happened, I went to visit Richie. And this whole episode made him sick to his stomach. I, I'm going to tell you that. And the words that came out of him were, Cindy, I can't believe he wrote that about, about me. I thought he was my friend. That's what he, look at me when I'm talking to you. He said, I can't believe he said that. I thought he was my friend. So I want you to know that that's the words. He did not do this as a political stunt. You, to I, you know what? I might come back with Michael Kelly because I got a lot more to say because I want people to know. I want people to know what the Democratic Party in this town is really about. Because I know. Alexandra Slaney and then Robert Young. Mary Zambrello, 85 Hillcrest Ave, Weathersfield. Um, thank you, town council, for all that you do, for police, for all that you do. And we have all had in this town a really tough couple of weeks. So uh, just wanted to start with that. And I had you know a bunch of stuff written down because I wanted to make sure I didn't fumble too badly over what I was going to say. Um, but as I'm sitting there, you know, what am I, like number 36 toward the end? I've been able to hear, you know, a lot of other perspectives, a lot of other viewpoints. Um, I've had, you know, a lot of scribbles of things that I didn't consider before that maybe I have more questions on now, um, that I learned a little bit more about, that I need to be more aware of, things that I still stand by. Um, but I'm hoping that everybody is doing the same thing and learning a little bit more about this issue that has clearly divided our town that, didn't just start now, you know, this is about kind of the proximate cause, but this is something that obviously is, is much more deep, deeply seated than just what has brought it to the surface. So I hope that we're all listening and, you know, I love Weathersfield and we are a great community, but we have to listen to each other, we have to learn, we have to understand that there are different points of view. Um, first off, I wanted to say, well, my first second off, because that wasn't the first part, because I, I rethought, which we should all be doing. Um, I totally respect the Weathersfield Police Department. They risk their lives every single day. I appreciate them having them stationed outside my house this week, multiple times a day, see those blue and red lights through the door, which was alternately, you know, terrifying and comforting at the same time. Um, knowing them, they were outside of Emily's house and the other counselors that received really pretty horrific threats. You know, when you get the threats, you don't say, well, gee, that must be from Florida. You say, wow, that's a really freaking sick thing to say to somebody. So thank you, police, for that. I also respect and completely appreciate our town council by abiding by Weathersfield's flag policy. It is what it is now. May it be revised? It certainly may, but it is what it is now, and I respect the town for abiding by their policy. Um, 30 days notice, vetting to ensure community standards. Um, in terms of standards, both the intention of the proposed flag's message, which we know is clearly one thing, but as well as how that message may be received also matters. And we know that there is national precedent that the, that the thin blue line flag is viewed by many in the way in the, the way that its message has been misappropriated. I would be angry too. That was not its intention. But we know that it's been banned in Los Angeles. There is precedent for, no? 
Yeah, please, please be respectful. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm just I'm quoting the Hartford Current. I didn't do please additional research. Respectful. I didn't look at, at Wikipedia. I didn't do any additional research. I just I looked at the Hartford Current. But an example of a place where you we would want to make sure if we were making a on the fly policy change to allow for a potentially controversial flag that it would not invite civil rights litigation. And that would be placing an unwelcome spotlight on, on all of us. So it's to be careful if we're making, um, making allowances. Um, and I know the council is opening to looking at policy changes so that more of emergency situations can be addressed. Um, to, to, to Weathersfield and the other 168 towns in Connecticut all honored the fallen state trooper exactly in the same way by lowering the American flag to half mast, which is the highest possible show of respect that there is. Um, oops, lost my notes there. Um, then I'll leave it at that. But thank you, Weathersfield Police, every day, sincerely, bottom of my heart for all that you do. Um, thank you, Town Council, for all of the often thankless scrutiny, tough, tough work that all of that you do. Special shout out to Councillor Zambrello, of course. And please, let's use this as an opportunity to work together to make Weathersfield a, self, a safe and welcoming place for everybody. Thank, thank you, Mary. I have, thank you, Mary. I have Alexandra Slaney, uh, Robert Young, and then Doug Weed. So, Alexandra? Good evening, I'm Alexandra Slaney and I live at 346 Prospect Street in Weathersfield. I don't have the time to summarize recent federal case law, especially because it will bore most of you, but there was recent federal case law regarding governmental speech and flag raising, specifically requiring towns to adopt strict policies that they are not supposed to deviate from. That has led to a round of changes in policies for many towns across the nation. Suffice it to say, the underlying legal issue is very complex, and I support the vote of this town council, which is in line with that federal case law. But my main concern is with the civility of this town. It is abhorrent to our democracy that public discourse has devolved into death threats and hate speech. I would like to point out that not even our Constitution protect, protects death threats or hate speech. Hate speech and death threats are not something anyone should have to learn to live with or get used to. It is antithetical to our democracy. The appropriate response to something you dislike is showing up at the ballot box and participating in our political process not personal attacks. Regardless of your personal or political views, the public servants of this state and this town deserve, at a bare minimum, our respect. This includes both our police officers and our council members. Both are public servants. Both sacrifice so that the rest of us can enjoy the freedoms we prize so highly. Our town needs both of these institutions and both of you deserve deserve our utmost gratitude and respect. So I thank you both to the police officers here tonight and to our town council. Thank you. Robert, Robert Young next, Doug Reed and Sally Keating are the next three. Robert Young, Mr. Young. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, first of all, I came to the meeting tonight and I ended up going down into the overflow area where the presentation, the, 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 you could see everybody up here, but you're difficult to understand. And, you know, I've complained more than once about this issue on television, on the computer, it's tough to understand. And sitting in here, for me, it's tough to understand. And nothing has been done. Tonight, here we are. We have a grand audience who sat down, down here in that overflow room, and they had issues listening and understanding what people were saying. 
We spend money in this town foolishly in many cases. We spend money on things that we don't need. We spend money on things that we already have and we want to have more. And I'll give you a quick example. We have a, a website that I think is pretty good that we can browse through and find things. But then we have the Heritage Commission website that we also have to have because our home website is not being used. And in this particular year, this town council voted for $10,000 for this Heritage Commission website that we don't need. And of course tonight, with this turnout and with what I saw on television over the week, as soon as this hit the television, I saw it and it spread all over creation and really made a name for us, Mayor, with all the money that we spend to get people to come here, what do we have to offer this tonight? We sit down there in that room, that overflow room, and the people talking from this podium, it's difficult to understand them. That's one hell of a poor presentation for us to give to the community of Connecticut and the nation that is watching in here tonight. We also spend our money uh, on, on the Great Elm website. Complain about it? Doesn't matter, folks. They do nothing but vote for it, vote for it, vote for it, and we end up paying for it. Tourism. We have a photo contest that we put money up to so somebody can send a photo in and make some money. And it comes out of every taxpayer's pocket. And tourism, the state of Connecticut gives us a lot of money for tourism. But this council, again, voted this year by the recommendation, recommendation of our town manager, $10,000. Last year, it was $8,000. You know, where does all of this end? And then, of course, we have tonight. And we have the issue that occurred at the last town council meeting. But I'm not here to talk about all of that tonight. I continue to talk about a already fixed, already completed budget that we, the citizens, get five minutes, ten minutes to talk. You get the report overnight and you got to be ready to talk about issues. There's a lot of things in the budget that I believe are feather bedded into the budget. So, and they, and they sneak it in. And nobody catches it, which tells you about the caliber of people that we have that represents our town in Weathersfield. You know, we have an organization called Parks and Rec. And within that, we have the Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative. Well, in 2023-24, uh, the town council allocated $20,000. This next budget year, they allocated $25,000, which is a 25% increase. Hits everybody. The sad thing is, it's just one line item, and it goes on. We have physical services where we have, um, they, had a, they had in the budget for 38,000, uh, I'm sorry, $33,000. And, and, and then this year they have 38,000, which is a 15%. Nobody catches this. Thank you, and Mr. we Young. end up being a disgrace. Yeah, I know, I know, Mayor. This is another one of your uh, games to keep, to stop the public from talking. Thank you, Mr. It's Young. A, it's a real Thank deterrent, you. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Young. I have Doug Weed, Sally Keating, and Mark Rich as the next three. Uh, is Doug here? Doug? Good evening, and I thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, first, I just wanted to express... Doug, your name and address for the record. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Doug Weed, 188 Windmill Hill, Weathersfield. 
Um, first, I just want to express my uh, sincere condolences on the loss of Officer Pelletier and Officer Garden. Uh, this is certainly, you know, two tragic losses to our town and our, our community and the state at large. Um, secondly, I did want to also express that, you know, having deference against the members of the town council is completely unacceptable, and those individuals need to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law if they can be identified. We're, this, we're better than this, and we should not be doing this in any shape or form. Um, in terms of the activity and the decisions by by the uh, town council, I guess how I, how I look at this is I think there are arguments on both sides of this. You know, I think one of the arguments to say that, you know, gee, the flag might be viewed as being political is one side of it. Another one is we need to follow procedure. Having said that, my perspective is that we did lose an officer. A, a good faith motion was made to, to fly this flag for one day, and I think, candidly, that should have been the decision. Could the process have been handled better? Yes. Do I think, you know, this could have been brought up if under town guidelines it's allowable before the meeting? I think that would have been better. Do I think that, you know, the town council and their deliberation should have been willing to consider exceptions? I think that should have been considered. Um, I, I, I do think, you know, the issue of the flag and how it's considered by people, while that does have some merit, you know, the concern with the racism aspect of it, I think the, the, the greater good for our society is to look at what this flag represents to the police officers in the town of Weathersfield, and that's really what needs to drive, drive our answer here. Um, in addition, what I'd like to suggest is that one of my old bosses at the place I worked at Aetna suggested always assume positive intent. And candidly, what I'm, what I'm hearing from a lot of people tonight is, you know, not assuming positive intent. While I may disagree with the majority of a council's decision, I think they have the right intentions. While some people are suggesting the motion was made for political reasons, I don't believe that. And again, I think positive intent should be assumed with regard to this issue. Um, you know, la last but not least, I, I would like to simply thank all the town council members for their service. You guys are in the arena, unlike a lot of other people, and I thank you for that. And finally, I'd like to thank the police department at Weathersfield for their being here tonight, but for keeping us safe at all times. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. I have Sally, Keating, Mark, Rich, uh, and Michelle Lavoy as the next three. Is Sally here? Sally, I'm not hearing Sally. Is Mark Rich here? Yes. Hi there. I'm Mark Rich, uh, 199 Wells Road is for the record. And Oh my gosh, sorry, I'm sweating. I'm sweating with excitement. I've been waiting so long to be up here and speak. I've been just like itching to be up here. Um, I just, first of all, want to thank the Wesfield Police Department, Wesfield Fire Department. Uh, I feel like we all have the same amount of love and respect for all those groups of people. And the, the fact that there's like a notion to think that some people don't is just silly. And I actually spoke to uh, members of the Weathersfield Police Department. Uh, I'm not going to say who because they asked me not to, but they said that they know everyone in the community loves and appreciates them and respects them for what they do every single moment of their life. And they, they know that, but they felt shooken up by this whole like argument that the town has been having for the past few weeks because there's just been groups of people saying that people do hate them and they don't respect that situation. And I just, that makes me sad to hear that the police know that and they believe that we love them, but they sometimes feel insecure in that after constant rhetoric going on online and in person in these meetings. And, um, oh, I got a timer, I didn't even know that. Um, and I also wanna say uh, a special thank you to the whole town council, but, um, Specifically to um, Councilors uh, Zambrello and Councilors Carbone, who uh, both really helped me uh, kind of like 
clear through like uh, I felt so confused about this issue and they both were able to kind of clear a path and help me think more clairvoyantly about just like how we could be a better community. And I, when we were speaking, we kind of were talking about how everyone in the town has so much more in common than we do differently. And it makes me sad to see us arguing about something instead of trying to come to a, a compromise or agreeing to disagree. And, you know, like, I walk into these meetings and I see, like, almost like everyone, like, I, like, kind of, like, know you, like, like, you over there, like, I, like, went to your house, like, I, I was friends with your kid in high school and I went to your house. Like, some people in the overfill room, like, they were my teachers in middle school and high school. Like, some of the people were my baseball coaches, like, all people who, like, help build the person who I am today, and and the person who I am today knows that Weathersfield is a place that, that breeds compassion and love and respect for everyone. And to hear um, that certain council members are being threatened online, it just makes me sad, and I would encourage everyone in town to maybe keep our, our discussions in person or off like public places because it does invite like one of my I didn't, he wasn't my teacher in high school but one of my teachers came up and said a dude from Florida was calling him about this issue which is just that's just like shouldn't be happening they don't know they don't know what Weathersfield is about they have nothing to do with Weathersfield so I just feel like an online breeds like just like threats to be posed to all the council members to people in the town, like that's just not what Weathersfield is about. We're about love and caring about each other, and I know that with my heart, and I, I know you guys all know that. So I think that we should all we the flag issue is something I think we should come to agree to disagree upon in in interest of our community because it seems like it's tearing us apart in a kind of a way. Like I heard someone like. Like that second dude who came up, like he said something, and then someone else came up and started screaming and cussing him out, and it, it like jarred me. Like I was like, "What?" Like I thought I was at town council of Weathersfield, like my home. Like I didn't think that that's what we were all about. Like I, I don't know. I, I'm, my time is wrapping up. I see I got the yellow light on, so uh, I'm just gonna like wrap up there, I guess. Like. May, we all respect we all respect everyone here we all respect the police the fire department the military everyone we love everyone here I, I i think we should put this to rest and and move on and carry on with love in our hearts thank you guys so much John here. Uh, Michelle Lavoie and John Truesdale are the next two. Uh, he was tall. Michelle Lavoie, 16 Westwood Drive. Good evening, everybody. The last time I stood before the town council, it was in support of police, the mishandling of my chief of police's retirement, so at least I'm consistent. First, I'd like to offer my sincerest and heartfelt condolences to the family of Trooper First Class Aaron Pelletier. Her speech was, was amazing, and if her words, spoken by the family, didn't move you, I doubt mine will. But I will use my voice to support that family anyway. Let's unpack the timeline of events. The council changed the flag flying rules to allow, allow for flags other than the state and federal to fly. This council flew the thin red line flag to, in honor of Firefighters Day. Trooper First Class Aaron Pelletier was horrifically killed in the line of duty at 2.45 on Thursday, May 30th, 2024. On Monday 6-3, Councilor Member Bailey, longtime first responder, Weatherfield Fire Chief, and son of a former police lieutenant and acting chief, I believe, requested the town fly the thin blue line flag on the day of the trooper's funeral. 
one day. After much fumbling and proper discussion and lack of listening and considering the deceased at all, the motion was denied. Denied. A council member offered to fly a different flag. You use that as your argument. Yet that too was a thin line flag. The following day, Amy Bello, in a ceremony with the governor, stated on camera, the flag already flying would be lowered to fly at half staff to honor Trooper First Class Pelletier. Only that flag had to be lowered with old glory as per the governor's orders. I'm not sure anyone agreed with that poor reference. After social media chatter, Emily decided it pertinent to call the thin blue line flag racist, antagonistic, and on national news outlets, and concluded if you think it means something different, fly it at your own house. Many people believe that about any non-government official flag. And of course, Mickey, he decided to call everyone who supports Bailey, request to honor the fallen officer, people with bad intentions and hateful and unforgiving? This is completely unacceptable. On June 7th, a week late, the town of Wethersfield town manager issued a press release offering condolences to Trooper First Class Aaron Pelletier. A week late. How embarrassing. The fact that you are in a position to step up and educate instead of decimate this flag and instead you chose to per perpetuate the hate and false narrative. Your actions and words perpetuating this false narrative is dangerous for our blue line. You understand that, right? Many, many people recognize the elusive political stunt under the guise of being inclusive. Many, many people believe you made the wrong decision about that flag. Many, many people believe your vote followed by your actions are proof you do not support the police. Many, many people are appalled at your reaction to your own horrible inaction, again, leaving a strong impression with people confirming your lack of support. Many, many people believe holding on to that 30-day rule in light of a death perpetuates the belief that you do not support police. I wonder if you can't handle an emergency flag raising in honor of a fallen trooper, what emergency can you handle? Many, many people believe trashing Councilman Bailey on the town page after your poor decision was another horribly bad decision that again proves your lack of respect. Many, many people would like to first apologize to the officer who stood in the room that evening. Our sincerest apologies. That must have felt like a gut punch. Many people would like to offer condolences to all our men and women who hold the blue line every day, even when people in power like our town council make the job of serving and protecting more dangerous and volatile. Many people stand behind our thin blue line and the flag that represents their dedication to public safety and will continue to support the families of the fallen in any way we can, especially our own Bobby Garton. Many people think that a leader would have apologized to the Trooper First Class's family, Bobby Garton's family, the townspeople, and the local PD, especially your standing officer. You haven't. Instead, you've held on to your flag policy as if your vote couldn't have changed anything. Many people see the lack of empathy and compassion, the refusal to see so and acknowledging the feelings. Summarize. What we are still going to stand behind the thin blue line, support our police, and we believe that um, what you did, you claim, uh, what you have done exactly what you claim ex extremists have done. You've used the flag for personal advantage, political attention, and a malicious enact toward public servants. And you cannot blame that on anyone else but the naysayers. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. I have, I have John. Thank you, Michelle. I have John Truesdale. Is John here? Good evening. Uh, John Truesdale, 9 Timber Hill Road, Cromwell, Connecticut. That's right, Cromwell, a couple towns down. Um, an interloper, carpetbagger. Um, 
Now, while I don't live here in Wethersfield, I feel I have some fantastic connections here. Uh, I've been lucky enough to do a bunch of uh, work at the high school, uh, supporting uh, theatrical productions over the last 25 years. I've also volunteered, designed, and built out the uh, community TV station over at Pitkin. And I did the same at the multipurpose room at Corpus Christi. Uh, and to be honest, I'd love a chance to look at what's going on with this microphone system <laughs> and why it sounds so fuzzy on the stream. Uh, but during the past quarter century, I've interacted with numerous police officers at various events and found them to a person to be professional, friendly, and always dedicated to de-escalating heated situations, which is exactly what they're having to do right here. Uh, it's no wonder why they are unanimously supported by the folks in this room and the citizenry at large. I'm reminded of Matthew 5.9, blessed are the peacemakers, and here they are performing that calling. Lastly, uh, I have numerous and dear lifelong friends here in town, and as such, my heart aches for what you guys are going through. My concern is how unfortunately this has been handled, both by those who sprang it on the council ad hoc and the somewhat ham-handed reactions of others when they were caught off guard. So I have a question, and it's rhetorical in nature, but I would ask that everyone consider it in their hearts. There are 169 towns in Connecticut, Weathersfield chose not to put this flag up after this horrible tragedy. 168 other towns chose to do the exact same thing. That includes Southington, the hometown trooper, uh, the hometown of Trooper First Class Aaron Pelletier. Mark Twain is credited with a lie travels around the globe while the truth is putting on its shoes. So my question is this. The people who benefit from this storm are the people who broker and peddle outrage. They fan the flames of discord to profit, for profit. Some profit financially, some profit politically. Look around. These people are your neighbors. They're the ones who help you clean up after a hurricane, the people who help you shovel out after a blizzard, the people who bring you a hot dish when you lose a family member. Do you really want those predators defining your wonderful community? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Thank you John. So that is all the speakers that have signed up. What we're going to do now is anybody who has not spoken yet and wishes to speak can speak now. If there isn't anyone else, then we will go on with the agenda. We do have public comment at the end of the meeting. If someone who has not spoken yet wishes to speak, please, Deborah, please, and anyone else uh, has the right to do that now, and then we'll go on with our business agenda, and there will be a public comment section again at the end. Name and address, please. Deborah Cohen, 73 Church Street. I'm going to be very brief. A lot was said here this evening. Some I agree with, some I don't agree with. I just want to make two points. Um, the specific issue aside, I know I'm supposed to be looking at you folks, but this is a community comment. The specific issue aside, what I find to be the most embarrassing thing at, coming out of all of this is the vitriol, is the neighbor against neighbor, is the us versus them, is the total division that this has caused. Um, it sucks. It's dumb. <laughs> it's going to get us nowhere. It's not going to solve anything. And I find it so sad and so troubling. Um, I can't think of any more words to describe it. Just use your imaginations, please. The other thing that I would like to say on behalf solely of myself, um, and I'm going to preface this with the comment that um, I would personally choose not to fly the thin blue line flag for reasons that I'm not going to bother sharing. They're not important. They're my feelings. People do what they want. Given that, I absolutely um, am totally offended by anyone who will make the assumption that because I have a problem with that flag, I don't support our police officers. Thank you. I happen to support our, our, our police department wholeheartedly. And it has nothing to do with the flag. Making an assumption about how someone does or does not support any particular group based upon whether or not they're going to fly a flag is arrogant, it's nasty, it's ignorant, and it's simply unacceptable. People cannot make assumptions about where I stand in, ter in terms of supporting the police based on what I decide about flying a flag. 
So stop, because it's juvenile. And again, it will get us nowhere. I would really like to like more of you. I would really like to get to know some of you better. There is one person here. No, not going to do the name. There's one person here with whom I agree on absolutely nothing. Um, and I'm not saying this to be funny. We don't agree on anything. But we've talked to each other. It's really amazing how that can be done. There's another gentleman who is no longer in the room um, with whom I have very many differences and we are planning to get together over a cup of coffee and talk. And not just talk at each other, but listen to each other. That's something that we have lost the art of doing. Um, there's another person in this room, kind of looking at him, at her. And I would say that I would welcome the same opportunity to do that with you, Michelle, if you are willing. We've been at it because I'm just De as De guilty as that. De Deborah, I'm going to ask you to address the council, not, okay. the, not people in the audience, please. You're right. I apologize. Um, I will make the offer to sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one with anybody with whom I may have had a back and forth with on, um, on social media because we all do it, all right? I'm not untouched. So, um, you know, I listened when the folks from your side were talking. Listen to me. Deborah, now. Hey, Deborah, I ask you to be respectful and I ask every audience member to be respectful. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Thank you. I am putting the, the offer out there for anybody who wants to sit down and have a conversation even if we disagree. If you choose not to do it, that's on you. But we have to do better because, quite frankly, we're falling apart. Good night. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. Now, I'm taking folks that have not spoken before. Please state your name and address. Record. Yes. Sure. Karen Letizia, 190 Carriage Hill Drive in Weathersfield. I'm the proud neighbors of Mr. and Mrs. Garton who lost their son, Bobby. My condolences again to both of you. When all of this happened two weeks ago, I had my ledger pad out and I was just constantly writing notes down about what I was going to say. And then these past two weeks transpired and the things I read on social media, um, again, it, this is going to just kind of sound fragmented because I'm just trying to shoot from the heart. But some things that I read that were said by certain members to others, I, I, I couldn't even believe it. This is the council that's supposed to all be getting together to represent the town of Wethersfield and you're just saying terrible things about each other. Rich Bailey asked for one day for a flag that, okay, some of you here don't know what it was, most of us do, and it means a lot to us. Oh, let me back up. My maiden name is Sharkovich. I had three retired brothers on the Hartford Fire Department. I have one who's still on the Weathersfield Fire Department, and my two nephews are on the Weathersfield Fire Department. So the thin red line means an awful lot to me. And if God forbid something were to happen to one of them while serving on this town, I would expect that thin red line to be up there because it means something to me. And maybe you don't know what the thin red line meant and maybe you don't know what it meant. I know what it means. I know how many times they've been called away from my parties birthday parties, my 97th mother's birthday party, to protect this town, protect this town. Just like, thank you, all of the police officers doing here, and the thin blue line means a lot to a lot of people in here as well. Change the policy and fix it, because you're not going to want something like this to happen again. And like I said, God forbid something happens to one of them when they are on the line of duty and I don't see that thin red flag, Weathersfield will probably be on the national news again. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Yeah.
last piece. Hi, Lori Tulin, 83 Hartford Ave. Um, I wasn't going to speak tonight. Uh, I did want an opportunity to say that I am in great support of the Weathersfield Police. And they have come to my house many times in crisis with my parents who are disabled. Um, I have family who are officers, and I do appreciate all that you do. Um, and there were a lot of officers tonight who were incredibly respectful um, of all the different opinions that are flying. I'm sorry they have to sit and listen to the childish behavior. That being said, um, I think we have to come back and look at a different policy. We're not going to agree on this flag. We are going to have to compromise. We're going to have to learn how to talk to each other. We have to listen to each other. I came here tonight, and before I even entered the doors, one of our local Facebook administrators verbally assaulted me while I stood there and listened. And when I said what our young person said earlier about, you know, there's, we're more alike than we are different. Lori, please, if you address us for council. Yeah. When I said that, I had to listen to vitriol about the pride flag and how offensive the gay people are. I was screamed at out front. I don't know who the officer was that stood there and, and listened. It was there. And I appreciate that he didn't intervene. I'm not saying that. But to say it's not political, it's disgusting. I am your neighbor. I am a lesbian. I am not hurting your children. I vote for people who support the police budget. I have gone and spoken with the police officers. I am heartbroken for families who have lost their loved ones. And this immediately turned ugly and it was disgusting. And that is the embarrassment. I hope we will all come back to this and do better. I am your far left progressive. And I have done nothing but love the people in this town. <laughs> One of our other administrators and her husband walked past me and flipped me off a few years ago because I was holding a Black Lives Matter flag. That's who's representing you. It's disgusting. We can do better. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Lori. Again, if anybody who has not spoken before, who has not spoken and wishes to speak, yes, Amanda, and we'll go to our regular agenda. Amanda Drew, 340 Wolka Hill Road. Um, I actually wrote this before all the social media blew up, so I'm very disappointed by everything that transpired, so um, I didn't really do that. I just want to say, I am so disappointed in what has happened these last few weeks. You are supposed to be the best and brightest of Weathersfield, the ones we are to look up to and respect, the ones who are our champions and who champion the best of our town and prove to the world why we decided to make Weathersfield our home and raise our children here. Instead, you resorted to name calling and inflammatory language. I have never in my life been called a racist or that I might be a supporter of white supremacy, never. It hurts me deeply to think that each of you has that opinion of me or somebody that I know. The issue that I, that I have is that you come from a very uninformed place. You made decisions about our beliefs without due diligence. You made choices to, un to understand our support from articles or Wikipedia and not come to your neighbors to discuss them. I believe you come from a place without knowledge to truly understand and recognize why this is so offensive. We can plainly see that you do not have a first responder in your family. We obviously know 
that you do not kiss your husband when he leaves for his shift, not knowing if he's going to be coming back home the next day, which is what I did this morning. And we also are, it's obvious that you have actually never received a call from the chief telling you that your husband was hurt. I have. It is a gut-wrenching call that nobody should ever have. But I am lucky. I am lucky because my husband came home to me and my two children. They did not go home back to offer Sapelis here and his two children. And that is shameful. And, I'm, and it, it upsets me so much that you do not see that. And you don't appreciate that. And your words matter. And they're hurtful. That is why this, th that flag hangs in my yard. That flag symbolizes love, honor, respect, and sacrifice. And every single time I see on the news that an officer was killed or a fireman loses his life, I go right back to that minute. And I'm doing it right now. I remember me getting that call, running to Waterbury Hospital, wondering what I was going to see and trying to give my husband a kiss before he goes into surgery, hoping he will come back to me. That panic and fear, it's real, and it happens every single time, and every first responder family feels it. Then, to have the inflammatory and incendiary comments already added to our already raw emotions, I hope you can see the damage that you created. So many times, I hear your words about how you care about how you believe that we need to be inclusive, to think beyond ourselves, but it seems to be only lip service when it doesn't match your political agenda. Look inward and ask yourself if you truly are as open and as warm as you say. Just a few short months ago, you were up in arms over another flag talking about how certain residents made you feel unwanted, and now you're doing the exact same thing to others. Is that the lesson that we should be teaching our children? Is that how we want to be seen? And is that how you see me? Because it sure feels like it. My home is welcoming to everyone, race, creed, gender, political affiliation, and profession. I have never been disrespectful to any of you. And even as we stood for hours at the polls, side by side, and even some of you have come to my home. And that's because we are neighbors and we deserve respect compassion and love. And you did not give that to us these last few weeks and it's beyond disappointing. But I know you have an opportunity to correct this. I do not believe all is lost and the ship cannot be corrected. I am asking for an apology. And my girls will tell you there are three parts and they hate this, but there are three parts to an apology. The first part of the apology is to say you're sorry. The second part of the apology is to say why you're sorry but the third part is not to do it again. And that is the very most important part because the words are just hollow if there isn't any action behind it. My hope is that you reflect, rethink, reassess, and regulate your future responses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please proceed. Name and address. Laura Mullally, 46 Sunset Boulevard. And I'm embarrassed because I cannot articulate myself as well as that young lady just did. Um, I um, just wanted to share that I have two sons currently serving in the United States Navy abroad. And I have strongly encouraged one of them who's in the security field to return to Weathersfield to be a police officer and then maybe detective. And I am hoping that this incident of recent and all this dialogue, it, dialogue is good. It's, even when it's hard, it's good. I am hoping this dialogue will bring about new attitudes about um, how important the police forces are. Again, I have stated that I had a major accident and I'm very thankful for the diligence and professionalism of the officer who responded to my scene immediately. 
I would love for my son to come back and serve here in Wethersfield as a police officer. So I feel a little bit optimistic that all this dialogue will turn around into something pleasant that will welcome him and he would not be shunned on or ashamed to put on a uniform in the town that he grew up in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who has not spoken yet who would like to speak? If not, I'm going to move to the regular agenda. Our next item is council reports. Does any councilor have a report to give this evening? Hearing none, I will move to the next item agenda, councilor comments. Does any councilor wish to make a comment at this time? Deputy Mayor Forrest. I would like to talk to my fellow councilors. I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Sincerely. And we're going to have a an interesting conversation a little bit about what happened a couple weeks ago. I have a member, I don't usually talk often about my private life and my family life, but this is one of those moments where let's have a little conversation. I have a family member that's a member of the force. I was the one that requested the military flag and provided it for this town because my father's army, my grandfather's army, and I had two major role models, including my parents, when I was coming up. These were two men that were men of character, respect, pride, generosity, courage. One of those men was so influential on me that he guided me and he was the reason that I chose the profession that I'm in. He was a Marine. He was a Connecticut State police officer. I laid him to rest about six months ago. I was there. The American flag was folded. The officer of the Army handed it to my aunt. It was one of those moments. We've all been there. Many of those moments we've talked about today. A couple weeks ago, I did have to do some quick online research, figure out what was going on. And at that moment, right, we looked at the tape. I said, I don't necessarily believe this site. I said it. I meant it. I wasn't sure. There's a history here that I didn't know about. And some people came up today and said, Mr. Forrest, your mother's a teacher. She is. And they're right. You shouldn't just boldly and blatantly just believe a sight. And I didn't. And when we were taking that vote, and I was thinking about some of the things that I had just read, not necessarily true. I thought about all the people that do serve. I thought about the people that put themselves in harm's way. And I thought to myself that I'm not prepared now, at that moment in time, the few minutes that we had, I wasn't prepared, and I said this a couple times, to be able to make that decision. Because I believe that there are a lot of people out there that probably saw that symbol as a symbol of all the things that I thought of in my uncle. 
camaraderie, respect, honor, dignity, the things that a person aspires to be even though they screw up. Now, I'm, I'm strong enough to apologize if something that I said was inflammatory, and I do. I do from the bottom of my heart. I do it sincerely. If I've hurt someone, I apologize to you directly, and I'll apologize to you to your face, and I'll shake your hand. Because I do believe, as I said before, that 98% of this stuff we're all on the same page with. But at that moment in time, I wasn't ready to say no, whether it was to any fallen officer, any person that serves in that capacity. And so I had to abstain. I wanted to talk to my police officers. I wanted to talk to my family members that serve right now on the force. I wanted to talk to the police chief or the state police but we didn't have that opportunity at that moment. So I wasn't ready to say no and send any disrespect to anyone that, that sees either that symbol as one of those symbols that is good and righteous. But while recognizing that, there's a little history here. There's a little history here. So that's just one seat on this council. I can only speak for myself on this one. But I am wanting, and I think that we need to, ensure that we find an appropriate way to honor the police if they fall or get hurt, fire, ambulance, those that serve our community in jobs that are really hard, really hard. And there's a lot of discussion about support, and this is why maybe the thing that hurts the most is sort of that 20 years of work, of working with the police, the unions, to ensure all the time in places that nobody sees adequate funding that we have enough officers so there's backups ready to go. A new bargaining agreement so that officers can spend more time with their families and not less and have better shift situations that are appropriate for all of our, all of their lives and the jobs that they have to do. And the amount of money for training and equipment and all the times that I'm talking to the chief of police about how can we increase the technology to make your jobs for men and women safer and easier. And that's where I'm coming from. That's a perspective that I'm happy to talk to and will and have on the schedule to continue to have that dialogue. To ensure that we're on the same page, that you know that I support you, and that you know that where I was coming from with that particular vote, that I wasn't ready to say no. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Further council comment? Councilor Bailey. I'm going to be brief. You know, I did serve in that community, the public service community, for years and years and enjoyed every minute of it. I did look at my daughter's face at times when I go running out of the house on her birthday or Christmas. And, and I think, Mickey, I think your words got, got way out of hand, but they're words. And you know what? I got pretty big shoulders. So, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate that it happened. But I got to be honest, never in a million years will I apologize for supporting our men and women in blue, ever. Thank you, you Councillor Bailey. Further council comments? Councillor Durek. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I won't be as short. I wrote a few things down. I was thinking that I should really say them or not, and here I am. I'm going to say it because that's just the way I am. Um, I'd like to start by offering my condolences to the family of Officer Pelletier and Officer Gardner. Um, I do have a need to say a few things after the last meeting. I don't have a need to explain or justify myself. I just need, I have a need to lay out some facts. So the first fact is that we did honor Officer Pelletier. As a town council, we started our last meeting with a moment of silence. As a town, we lowered our flags to half staff, just like every other town in the state of Connecticut did. Therefore, 
it is a lie that we did not honor Officer Pelletier. Fact, the town of Southington, the hometown of Officer Pelletier, has a flag policy as well. It's a different than ours, but they have a flag policy. They did not fly a blue thin flag or any other flag when he passed it on the town property. Why? Because of a town policy, the flag policy that they had. Just last year, when um, Officer Gardner passed away, I was not on town council. I, I was not somebody who was uh, organizing uh, and finding a way how to honor him. But we did not fly a, a special flag for him because there was a flag policy. It was different. Different policy, but it was a policy. Nobody made an exception because you, you either change the policy or you stick to the policy. I have said it before, I would be happy to change the policy. I think it needs to be changed, but until it's done, we have to follow what the, po what the flag policy is. Can we say that we did not honor uh, Officer Gardner properly? I can't say that. I think we honor him properly. The, the fact that we didn't fly that flag or the fact that somebody used that flag in a different place it's totally fine with me, but people stick to their policy. Uh, I don't want to make this about me at all tonight, but I do have to lay out a few, um, few more facts out there. Um, unfortunately, there is a small group of people that just, for some reason, benefits from spe spreading hate and divide in the, in the community. Um, thank you for reminding me that I wasn't born, born here. Um, but I also want to thank so many others who remind me that it doesn't matter. I've been here for 20 years. I love it. I don't plan on going anywhere. I don't hide behind policies, because if I did, I wouldn't be speaking tonight. If I was hiding behind the policies, I wouldn't answer close to a, million, uh, a thousand emails that I received, and probably rough, about half of them came back apologizing. And I did not mind them sending me insults because the way it was portrayed in the media and social media, I would probably do the same thing. Most people will, are not going to dig deep and see exactly what's going on. When people attack me for using social media, well, let me tell you something. The reason why I made, put out a statement out there is because, again, I'm not hiding. Before the funeral, this was all started. The, the social media attack started before the funeral. I was getting threats before the funeral, and I was waiting for the funeral to be over so I could put out my statement. Not because I have to justify myself, but because I, I have a need to say what the truth is. And when I'm running on the truth, I have no reason to hide. I have no reason to, to back out from anything. I'm open to talk to anybody about anything. I'm gonna always own, and I'm always gonna stand behind my decisions, even though they might not be something that you, that you want it to be, but they are what they are. I usually, I usually don't talk about my past a lot, but I have a need to make a connection here. Back in the 90s, this is how the occupation This is how occupation of genocide Bosnia started. Somebody co was convincing somebody else that I, at, at age seven, was a terrorist, that I'm gonna grow up and kill people. So they put me in a concentration camp. It all started with the hate speech. And if you think that I'm gonna back down, when things are not done right, I'm not. If I have to, and let me put it out there, if you propose a blue thin line flag tonight, or any other flag, I don't care what flag it is, you wanna fly it tomorrow, I'm gonna say no again. But if you propose it in the way that's designed in our flag policy, and you can go back and look at the previous meetings, for the purpose of flying the flags, I don't care what any of those flags represent. I voted on those 10 flags and I don't agree with all of them. But when we talked about this policy, I said, if we wanna create this policy to be more inclusive, we need to include everybody in the town. I am not gonna make those judgments what flag should fly, what flag should not fly. 
if you want to fly flags, we need to be inclusive. If it means to somebody in the community, we need to fly those flags. As far as Mr. Bailey goes, Mr. Bailey, you can love me, you can hate me. I'm not here for you to love me or to hate me. I'm here to do the work for the town of Bethersfield. I have to say I like you a lot. I didn't like the actions on the last, on the last meeting, but I like you a lot. But that being put aside, we still have another, what, 16, 17, 18 months to work together. I'm willing to work with you. I don't care how we're gonna end up as a relationship. Is it gonna be a friendly relationship or not? We need to work for the town of Wethersfield. We need to do better. And I'm just gonna tell you one, one other personal story, which I'm not gonna go deep into it, but for many years now, there have been things happening to a lot of our kids in, in Wethersfield because of who they are, because of what they believe in. I never went to the media, I never went to social media to cause a, a shame to our town. I never went there to gain some po political points or to make a story out of, out of it. I met with the people that I think are in charge, the people who can make a difference, so that every single child feels welcomed in Wethersfield. And that being said, I want you to help me and I want to help all of you guys to compete in what's good for the Wethersfield. And let's move on, let's do the project that we, that we need to do as a town. And that being said, I extend my hand to you to work together, love me or hate me, but you always get from me what I think, what I feel, and I'm never gonna go behind your back. I'm gonna tell you how I feel about it. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Councilor Adura, Councilor Bailey for a very kind gesture and both gentlemen, Councilor Bailey and Councilor. Does any other Councilor have any comments at this time? Zambrello. Thank you, Mayor. So looking back at the events of the last two weeks, I do recognize that I could have been more sensitive in my comments. It is a flag that is held in esteem by many dedicated police officers and their families. Um, and I am sorry for any hurt that my remarks caused and that this distracted from Trooper Pelletier's sacrifice. I do support our police. I supported their budget increase, their new contract. We funded a new vehicle in our tight budget this year. We've also been meeting with them to work together and move forward. And well, I'll be there tomorrow. I was there a couple of weeks ago too. And these conversations should have happened before any flag was proposed. We lowered the flags to half staff. We held a moment of silence. And we received no requests to do anything additional before that June 3rd meeting. Because it was the way it was proposed, there was no opportunity for public comment. So we didn't get to hear from any of you before we had to make a decision on this. And since that meeting, I have received numerous threats, rape threats, death threats, attacks based on my identity, some of the most vile homophobia I've ever had to read. And this behavior is, it's never appropriate. It's not okay. And yes, much of it did come from out of state, which is good and bad. Because people really don't know Weathersfield and I really want to thank the Weathersfield Police Department for taking all of that seriously and for being here tonight and, and all that they do. And I, I really appreciate the people of Weathersfield. So many of you have had some very civil, respectful conversations with me, have engaged with me on this, those who agree and disagree with the council's decision. And we really need to be able to have those serious civil discussions without resorting to attacks and threats like this all devolved into over the last couple of weeks. Civil discourse is one of the strongest tools that we have to protect our democracy. So thank you, thank you for um, service of the police department and thank you for People of Weathersfield for engaging with me. Thank you, Councilor Zambrello. Further council comments? Councilor Carbone. Thank you, member, Mayor and members of the council. Uh, clearly, this is a, a very emotional situation that has been created in the town. And I wanna start by saying thank you to everyone that came out in support of our amazing law enforcement who have been utterly and completely gracious um, over the past few weeks, which is no surprise. Um, and I commend them for their steadfastness. This entire situation saddens me from the initial vote to what has transpired over the days since. It started with comp comments made in haste and with great malice. It then continued with more comments made at a flag ceremony the next day and to various media outlets. 
we pay, became national news and an embarrassment. What, was a, what began as a last minute request and an, to make a small gesture to honor a fallen trooper and the sacrifice he has made quickly became something else entirely. The comments made by some of the council members were unnecessary, divisive, and callous. And not for nothing but quoting a, a well-known, fee biased publicly edited, edited online source during a meeting is never a good idea. Um, and then once ambiguous and inflammatory words were read, uh, and abstaining, ex abstaining from the vote was difficult to hear. So I thank you for that apology to the community, to everyone else, because um, I think that was definitely warranted. One of our council members went so far as to attacking another sitting council member on social media, posting claims about bad intentions, using the death of a trooper to gain political points that we were discussing, and this was a stunt. Again, I really do appreciate your words, Councillor Durek, but words do matter. And first, let me say, and many of you already know this, but I'm gonna say it a million times because I'm so incredibly proud of it. My father was the chief of police in Enfield, Connecticut. My grandfather was a police officer in Enfield, Connecticut. <laughs> Councillor Bailey's father was a Weatherfield, Weathersfield police officer for 32 years. Councillor Timbro's father-in-law is a retired police officer. This is who we are. This is ingrained in us. This wasn't some political stunt that we put out there, although some people would choose to believe otherwise. What is also extremely upsetting about this is that instead of the focus being on the fallen trooper and his beautiful family and the sacrifice that they've made, it is on this council's ridiculous and biased comments. Focus should be on the fallen officer and other fallen officers and the liberal policies that allowed a twice convicted murderer out on the road, all drugged up, to strike and murder this officer. I, yes, I voted against this flag policy. I don't think it's good for our community. I didn't then, I still think it now. And I abstained from voting on the proposed flags to be hung at that May 6th town council meeting, not because I didn't support those flags, and I did state that I do support many of those flags, but I didn't wanna be a hypocrite. And since we like to talk about facts, our own Democrat council members didn't even follow their own flag policy. It wasn't followed. Was the UN flag that was admitted to the agenda that evening sent in writing? Was there opportunity for public discussion? No. Was the fire fla fighter flag hung 30 days after it was voted on? No. It was voted on May 6th, it was hung on May 13th. So really you're in conflict with your own policy. We all talk about how words matter and the comments made by individuals on this council, they hurt our community. And I originally had wrote that I had yet to hear an apology, so these are the, the first I've heard and I really do appreciate them and I think our community does as well. I'm not sure, I do wanna move forward working with this council but it's hard um, to trust in our ability to govern and work through these issues that can affect our community so deeply. We are seeing firsthand the impact that one meeting or one comment can have across our town, our state, and incredibly the nation. We need to begin to heal as a town from this egregious lack of judgment by coming together as a community, showing incredible support for our police officers, gaining a better understanding of what the thin blue line flag actually represents, and by showing respect for our residents, they may have different views, are certainly good places to start. And it's my sincere hope, and I know it's our sincere hope here too, that we can continue to work on making Weathersfield a great place to live and to be. Um, and we clearly have a lot of work to do. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carbone. Further council comments? Councillor Timbrough. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone who came and spoke, um, regardless of what your opinions were. Um, I appreciate hearing all of them. I want to thank our law enforcement for being here tonight. Um, you know, I think one of the best things about this 
is that you know this is what living in this country is all about. It's about people being able to come together to voice their opinion in response to their government, and then their government being able to come together and move forward in a more positive way. And with everyone on the council, I'm incredibly encouraged and hopeful that we will be able to do that. Um, I respect everyone on this council. I respect working with them. And um, as I stated, I don't think that living here and being able to have this opportunity um, should go unnoticed. Um, I thought long and hard about what I was going to say tonight because so much has transpired over the last few weeks. And I think really what I came to was that I thought about what it meant to be and what it means to be an elected official. And ultimately, we all have our own guiding principles, we all have our own perspectives, but the purpose is to come together with different ideas, with different perspectives, and to come to some type of a compromise. And I think all ends of the spectrum are important because it creates, it creates balance. Um, when the flag policy was originally voted on, we disagreed, the, my, the Republican minority disagreed with it, ultimately because we felt that although it was very comprehensive um, and well thought out and we respected the work that went into it, that there would be some possible oversights or loopholes or you know, things that would happen that we wouldn't necessarily anticipate. And it happened much quickly than um, we thought. And also it would put us in the position of picking winners and losers, which none of us wanted to be um, a part of. When Councillor Bailey brought forth uh, flying the thin blue line flag, I can tell you that it was not about this flag versus that flag or this group of people against that group of people. It was about honoring a, fall a fallen officer and respecting that family um, because he went to work and he never came home. And that was the intent of that flag and something that I think was lost, unfortunately, uh, during this entire thing. Um, it was something that was not planned and concocted behind the scenes. When this original flag policy came to fruition and when we had conversations across the council, uh, it was stated very clearly that this was a work in progress, that it was to be flexible, that changes were to be made, that we would be looking at it because we wanted to make sure that it was inclusive to all different perspectives. Given the, I'm not gonna you know, go back into detail, but the two exceptions that had already been made, you know, when uh, Councillor Bailey haven't given his law enforcement background and family experience and all of ours, like Shelly said, it, it's ingrained in us. We did not anticipate that the response would be um, what happened. I, I, and I do think that it is not so much about the no vote. I think it's more about the words that were surrounding the no vote and then after having time to reflect, doubling down on those statements. Also, I think that although um, I can appreciate not having time, there were different ways given that this was such a tragedy and unanticipated situation. We could have gone into a recess, we could have called the chief of uh, police, we could have brought other people in, we could have said, hey, we're not gonna make a decision tonight, and that was something that didn't happen, which I feel personally um, that it uh, lacked the respect that, that um, this motion deserved. I think clearly this policy is um, flawed, uh, as we had stated before, and it needs to be looked at, and again, I'm looking forward to working on that um, moving forward, and I just want to end um, with saying again and reiterating that this shouldn't be a this group against that group, this flag against uh, that flag. It should be about a fallen officer who didn't return to his uh, family and making a policy that makes sense um, for the majority of residents. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Timbrell. Further council comments? Anyone? Um, let me make a, a few comments, uh, and not just about this, but let me start with, with this. And again, condolences for Officer Pelletier, 
Officer Carton, and my apologies for anything that I personally said or did that offended anyone. It's my hope that we can, and I think Councilor Timbo just said, we can come together. I believe that. This is a great community filled with wonderful people. I, I feel the heartbeat of this community all the time, and it's such a special community. And I know we will move on together, and I know this council will work well together. And I appreciate the comments of all the people that came tonight. Thank you. I appreciate the comments of all the counselors. I do want to highlight a couple other things that are important, and then we'll go to the rest of our agenda. Perhaps most importantly is last Wednesday, June 12th, we had 264 Weathersfield High School students graduate, which was a beautiful night uh, at the Cove. I'll mention two other things quickly. Last Monday night, June 10th, I spent uh, much of it at the fire department as I'm part of a small group to um, look at recruiting, and we have some very interesting ideas that uh, is important that we're working on that. And the other thing that I will mention is the PEP graduation, graduate. I see uh, Kim Bobbin who runs that. Great job, Kim, and Gina Barassi. There were nine graduates. Uh, several, some of our folks on this dais were there. Uh, and that was on, uh, in the last two weeks since the last meeting too. We had nine people graduate. It's a phenomenal program. There are wonderful things going on in Weathersfield. We will continue to emphasize that, and I promise you we will, we will work hard to work together to move past this. And uh, I thank all the community members who spoke tonight and appreciate all of you. I know this has been a difficult couple weeks. I know it's a difficult subject, but uh, we will heal this community. And again, thank you to all of you. Thank you for our law enforcement, our Weathersfield police. I said it before, they're outstanding men and women, and we have extraordinary leadership. Uh, and with that, I will close. Excuse me. Just one more comment. Uh, Council, Council. So I'm I'm completed. Council Zambrella. Did you I want just, to make an additional comment? Yeah, I was just hoping, um, perhaps Fred, you could clear up. I think there's some misconceptions about the 30-day request in the policy, just so we can have that on the record. So the policy states that a, a request from a citizen must be made 30 days prior to the actual flying of the flag, and that is to give time for that then to go to the council and see if any council member wants to sponsor it. And then um, from there, they make a motion at a meeting that it would be placed on a future agenda. And if that's voted approved, that if that's approved, then it would come to the next meeting for a vote. That's the way the policy is set up. Um, a council member without being asked by a citizen can at a meeting say, I'd like this to be considered for a future agenda item. I'd like flag X to be on the agenda. That's the way the policy set in terms of the process. So those are the two ways, the 30 days for citizens to submit. But again, the idea is that it gives everyone time to do the review. And even when a council member brings it up, they're not restricted to that 30 days, but they are um, restricted to add it to a future agenda, which gives you, it's at least two weeks. And then the council can decide whether or not they want to take it up or not. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager, Councilor Zambrello. Uh, and I did mention in my comments, we will be looking at the flag policy in an upcoming meeting. I will now ask for the Town Manager's report. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mayor. And just briefly, it has been a very challenging few weeks for all of us um, in this community. There's no doubt about it. I will say it's been also very challenging for staff because just as all the council members have been getting emails and calls and threats, so have the vast majority of our staff. And again, I will state most of that is from out of state. They actually said, I'm, call, I'm emailing you from Florida, you people suck. And some of them said a lot meaner things and, and, and made a lot of threats to people that had nothing to do with any of this. So, um, and it's, it was very new to a lot of staff members. So I just wanna thank them for their patience in working through this. I also wanna thank um, Police Chief Medina, his entire um, police department, for their fantastic work through all of this. You know, they took a lot of heat um, from other departments, from other um, others in this industry across the country about how could they take this, um, you know, from, from their own community. But they knew the truth that their community was not disrespecting them and their community did not in any way not support them. Um, they knew the truth and they fought through this and it was a difficult time and they always answered the call if there were any threats that were deemed serious, and I want to thank them for their professionalism and their dedication. And yes, it does.
and I want to thank them obviously for all the work for this event tonight because frankly the world we live in today you just don't know what people are going to do we had people say we're coming up with a busload from Georgia and you better hide and you better do things and you know do we believe them no but you just can't be too sure so we appreciate um, the police the fire marshal's office the support for tonight from the library IT and my office staff um, to make sure this ran smoothly and all of you could do come out here express your opinions in a safe environment and I appreciate all of you that stood up there and said what you believe and that's what this that's what government is about and I feel very strongly that we are going to be a stronger community for this experience as horrible as it seems right now um, you know and it has been a, a very tough few weeks but I know that anytime you go through something like this it either destroys you or it makes you stronger and I know it's not going to destroy this town because this town I've only been here two years but I can tell you that this town comes together when it means the most and I'm very confident that we're going to be stronger at the end of this so I thank you for the time thank you mr. town manager moving on town clerk sue your report the June EDIC memo with the development properties list update is included in the agenda packet for your review and also um, we've issued close to 800 dog licenses as of this afternoon we've been had a lot of steady traffic mm -hmm. thank you sue we will now go there are no bids we'll go to jay the consent agenda do i have a motion mr depp oh come um i have a correction for the for minutes the yeah oh. um under new business where um, Councilor Bailey motions to add the item to the agenda, it says, and Councilor Carbone brought this to my attention. Can I just, can, can oh, I just yeah. make a quick, just a quick point of order. Um, if you could pull that item from the consent agenda. Oh, okay. Just say, so you like to pull that item and then it's a done deal and then we'll cover it after the rest of the consent agenda is voted okay. on. I would like to pull the minutes for approval off the consent agenda. So motion. So ordered. Motion, yeah, good. Okay. You don't even need a motion. Nope. So yes, now, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, the consent agenda. Uh, I move the remaining consent agenda J2 through 5. Do I have a second? Second. Second by council. Any discussion? For, for acceptance. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor of the consent agenda items 2 through 5? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Now we'll take up the council Councilor Zambro. Okay. Sorry. Oh, no. no. Councilor Timbro. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's both of Um uh, Councilor Carbone brought this to my attention that when um, under new business where Rich Bailey motioned to add an item to the agenda, it says it was seconded by Councilor Shelley Carbone and it was seconded by myself. Can we make that adjustment, Sue? Yes, we'll take care of that. Can Sorry about that. No, yes. no Thank you. you. Vote on the minutes with that change. Vote, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, I move that we accept the minutes J1 with the amendment that was uh, just put forth by Councillor Timbro. Second. Second by Councillor. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, sing it by, by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Passed unanimously. Okay. So we are completed with the consent agenda and we have the two public hearing items. This is K1 and 2. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, both of these items are for uh, the um, Old Academy, which is down on Main Street at 150 Main Street. This is a town-owned facility. It's currently utilized by the Historical Society for their uh, offices and um, also holds most of their collection. Um, the building is in need of uh, a lot of different repairs. We just completed the roof repair, but um, we did the structural analysis with a previous grant, and um, the recommendation is that we move forward with architecture and engineering plans. These are two separate grants, but basically both based upon the certified local government. One is the um, is a non-matching grant, and that's for uh, $20,000 we're applying for. The second one is what's called a supplemental grant, um, and that's for $30,000. That is a 50-50 matching grant, and together they would cover uh, the expense of the architectural design that's being proposed. Um, there's some detail on that in the attachments that you have. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Do we have a motion for K-1? Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I move the council to authorize the town manager to execute and deliver a contract with the State of Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development 
with a supplemental certified local government grant for architectural and engineering work for the preservation of the old academy building. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Roach. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Item, item K2, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for R24-005, I move the council to authorize the town manager to execute and deliver a contract with the State of Connecticut, Department of Economic and Community Development for the Historical Preservation Enhancement Grant for certified local governments for architectural and engineering work for the preservation of the old academy for architectural engineering work for the, for the old academy building, for preservation of the old academy building. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Council Clancy. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Passes. Item L, unfinished finished business, we don't have any. Item N, new business, we do not have any. I'd like to keep the agendas light tonight so everyone have a chance to speak. Um, ordinance and resolutions for introduction, we do not have any. Item O is uh, public comment. And again, um, anybody who wishes to speak, you have five minutes, and please state your name and address for the record. And I saw Tom's hand first. Tom? <clears throat> Good evening. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I have in front of me the procedure for commemorative flag approval. A, requesting procedure. An individual group or organization who would like the town council member to request a commemorative or organizational flag to be adopted by the town shall make their request through the town manager's office in writing no less than 30 days prior to the request of when the flag is to be flown. That policy was not followed with regards to the UN flag that was adopted. And you can spin it any way you want, but you are hiding under a policy. It's a policy, it's not an ordinance, it's not a law. There is no flag police in Wethersfield. There's no policy police. To, to say that you couldn't vote for a flag because it didn't adhere to a policy it's just absolutely nonsense. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Cindy, I'm, I'm going to get you, but I'm just, is anybody who hasn't spoken before would like to speak? No? Cindy, go ahead. Yep. Again, name and record, uh, address for the record, please. Cindy Zerlis, 119 Two Rod Highway. I didn't get to finish when I was up here earlier. Um, <laughs> you know, First of all, Ken, I, I want to say to you personally, and I know we're not really supposed to address the council, but I, I have to tell you, when you got elected mayor, I was excited. I really was. And I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart. You know that a few weeks ago I called you about, I, I won't call it an issue, I'll call it a kudos thing. And, and I, I really, I, I respect you, and I was excited to see you become our mayor because I was hoping that there would be a little bit more camaraderie, I guess, around and, and, and more talking, but I'm not seeing that. And unfortunately, Matt, Matt, I don't know where he went because I, I really wanted him to hear this. Um, for me, this entire situation is really sad because um, I, I don't think a lot of people realize this, but I'm still a registered Democrat. And um, the reason I am is because I believe in a lot of the Democratic things. As a matter of fact, I actually bought myself a blue line shirt and a pride, it's a pride in a blue line shirt. I have a niece who's gay. So I, I get it. I, I don't like anybody saying anything about my niece. My niece has been picked on this, that, and the other thing. That woman that walked out earlier that get, was up here in tears, clearly I felt her. And I, I stopped her as she walked out the room. I did. I stopped her as she, as she walked out the room because I wanted her to know that just because I'm wearing a blue line flag shirt doesn't make me this evil person that I've been made out to be this last couple weeks online and threatened online. As a private citizen, I'm going to say that again. But, um, you know, I used to sit in the seat that, 
that Emily's sitting in. And Ken, you know that as treasurer of the Democratic Town Committee. I served from the time I was 19 years old on the town committee. And um, I served, I, I proudly served under, under the leadership of Shirley Steinmetz. Proudly served under Shirley. She was a great leader. Uh, and I, Matt, I'm glad you're back, because as a matter of fact, Matt Forrest, um, you wouldn't be sitting in that seat if it wasn't for me. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Because I was on the screening committee that picked you. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that screening committee didn't want you. They didn't want you, Matt. But I said to Shirley, keep him, he's a winner. And we swept that year, didn't we? That first year. You were a pretty high vote getter for a new guy. You were. And I'm gonna tell you, some of those people that said don't pick him. Cindy, I'm gonna ask you just to be respectful. Yep, I am, I am. I, no, I love Matt, I love Matt. I'll say it in front of everybody here, I do. And, but, and this is what I'm gonna let him know. Some of those people that picked you, they didn't talk kindly about you. They didn't. And you've surrounded yourself with those people. And that's what I want people to know about the Democratic Party in this town. They're not the people that you think they are. They're not. I know. I worked closely with these people. They are not the people. It is not the party that we grew up with. It is not the party. It, personally, I don't think it's the party that Ken Lesser belongs with. I don't. I don't. It's a different party, you guys. It's not the same party. I don't know what happened to this town since 2020. I watched it fall apart. And let me tell you something, I had some of the best teachers and you guys know that. Billy Seattle himself told me, look, watch, watch who's coming. And that's all I'm gonna say. I, I, I gotta sign off now, but seriously, I, I can't be a part of a party that treats people the way that you guys treat people. And, and again, Ken, no disrespect to you. Thank you, thank you, Cindy. Further council, uh, excuse me, public comment. Uh, Michael, again, name and address for the record, please. Still Michael Kelly, 193 Garden Street. To go on Facebook and make excuses for your actions, accuse Mr. Bailey of trying to score political points and demanding a public apology is the most asinine and disgusting course of action you could have possibly taken. You whine that his intention was only to make the Democrats look bad, taking no accountability of your refusal to make a simple exception this one time. What have you done for this town? Chief Bailey, Councilor Bailey now, has served this town for most of his life in the physical services department and in the Weatherfield Volunteer Fire Department for 35 years. Finishing his career as a two-term fire chief, he spent countless hours throughout the night plowing, making sure the roads were clear for us in the morning, responding to emergencies in the middle of the night when the rest of us were asleep, whether it was something as simple as a false alarm or as urgent as a raging fire. Until you're willing to be woken up at 3 a.m. by an unexpected screeching alarm in your ear, get out of your nice, warm, comfy bed and get to the fire station in a matter of minutes to make it onto the fire truck, I suggest you humble yourself. Councillor Bailey, he is the last person among all of you that needs to score any kind of political points, and he certainly owes none of you an apology. Ms. Umbrella, we went to school together. I believe you are a wonderful person, but politically, we are very far apart. I wish I could have warned more people against voting for you, as I knew exactly what kind of politician you would be, an activist rather than a representative. You claim the thin blue line flag represents racism and antagonism to many, many people. You falsely claimed that it was created or became very prevalent in direct response to the BLM, BLM protests. As I already addressed earlier, you are wrong. It became prevalent after police officers were murdered. You say we should not fly any flag that could be antagonistic. Yet you spearheaded the effort to raise the pride flag on town property, followed by the progressive flag to end the month. 
Whether you like it or not, there are people who disagree with what those flags stand for and un unfortunately are antagonistic symbols themselves. To use your own words against you, even if you don't personally believe that and you fly it at your own house and you think it means something to you, that's much more positive. It's just not how many people feel about it. You cannot force or legislate morality and shoving your own beliefs down your constitution th th constitution's throats under the guise of government speech will only have the opposite reaction of what you want. Although this isn't physics, I believe Newton's third law of motion applies here. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. To conclude, I implore the council to immediately revert our flag policy to what it was previously, the flags that are flying behind you right now. You open the door to this scenario and you must now close it. Despite my personal support of Mr. Bailey's proposal, it is only because of your decision to allow flags other than country, state, town, and POW MIA that I had the opportunity to support it in the first place. You cannot be trusted to remain unbiased in your approval of what flag is flown. And we, the citizens of Weathersfield, must reject your activism being flexed as government speech. When a law or policy is written, you must take into consideration how the opposition will utilize that against you when they take power. This town doesn't need a back and forth between Democrats and Republicans over what flag is raised. We need you to represent all of us, and that isn't done by raising a flag of whatever social cause is most prominent at any given time. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Yes, and again, name and address, please. Hi, I'm back. Right, Still please. nervous. Um, Janet D'Angelo, 102 Merriman Road. Um, I just wanted to um, reiterate a little bit about the flag policy that I had mentioned uh, about you taking into consideration all the people that came and spoke, both sides. And, and by the way, I want to say that threats against any of you were not appropriate. You know, I don't care who you are. You should never have to feel threatened, even though I don't agree with some of you. Um, but I, what I'm wondering is, and I agree with the previous gentleman who said uh, you should probably revert it back to the policy we had where there is no controversy about who's going to fly what. Um, I think that's a good idea. But I also think by doing that, before you take a vote on flying this thin blue line flag that upsets so many of us here in the town, and there are many of us, and we count also, and you should think twice about the decision that you make. Fly that flag. I don't care if it's for one day. Do the right thing. Then close the gap and make sure that this never happens again because it shouldn't have happened. And the policy we had before was a good policy. We can fly flags <coughs> of any sort on our property at home. That's true. And that's excellent for us to be able to do that in the United States to be able to say how we feel and put it out there. But I think you, if you just go back to the old policy without at least recognizing a portion of this town that counts for one day, I think you're doing the wrong thing. And I, I just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Christine? Yeah. Christine Kelly Lasella, 37 Belmont Street. Um, I got distracted when I was up here before because I was being smirked at. Okay? So I suggest maybe, along with a public information officer, along with a social media policy, you have a little workshop for the counselors up here on how they react and respond to public comment. Because I stood here and looked at Mr. Durek and he smirked, and more than one person in the audience saw it. 
I was also told two other counselors smirked, but I'll go back to the tape and watch that. But I'm offended, and I think it's rude. And I think you need to have a very firm discussion about how the members of the public, and I'm a taxpayer. I've lived here my whole life. I didn't disparage him. I didn't put him down. So there's that. So I got lost in my, my whole speech or whatever. Um, it's already been repeated. The policy has, was changed for the UN flag, but that was one of my notes. Um, another fact, the thin blue line flag was flown in Rocky Hill at their fire department, which is a town building, so it counts. Um, I'm not sure if any other cities in the state of Connecticut were asked by a council member to fly the thin blue line flag, um, but I do know it was flown in Rocky Hill. I didn't bring the picture, but I could get it for you. I wonder if any of you asked Councillor Bailey why he proposed the flag, or did you just assume why and make those disparaging comments? And all of you agreed, because you didn't dispute it. Each one of you, if you had a different thought, he should have been reprimanded, but nobody did. Mr. Forrest, you just made a statement earlier. I listened to you. I'm not looking at you saying, no, that's not what you meant. So I believe you. And that's what should be happening here. I hate that people are being threatened over this. I hate that we are wasting time, which I said to you in February, time will be used. And I shouldn't say people's voices don't count, but time is going to be used that we should be doing other things. And for someone to be so rude to, to another person, that is hatred, that is hate speech. Using the word evil, and I quote, evil was in that. Not one of you did a thing about it, but you tossed the guy for dropping an F-bomb a few years ago. Thank you, Dan O'Connor, for bringing that up. But I, I just, I, I really hope you guys make the right decision and come together. This is not about the pride flag. I use that as an example because that was the flag that's being flown now. I already explained to you my position on the gays. I got two gay sons. One of them told me, the pride flag means insecurity to me. I don't want to fly it at my home. I don't want you to fly it. That doesn't mean it means that for everybody, but do you see where I'm going? Every flag means something to everybody. Law enforcement is important to me. It's not to Ms. Zambrello. Can't help that but you flew the flag that she brought to the table. You gotta think about it. And the last thing I read in the rule book for the town council, if you guys were stuck on a decision, you could have deferred to the town manager, taken a break, and he could have looked up facts for you. I read that, it's in like a, a code of the Weathersfield conduct. Next time I'll bring it to show you all. But you all could have said, we don't really have enough information. So, I hope this ends. I hope nobody gets threats. That's wrong. I don't, you know, I don't dislike any of you, but I dislike the way that some people have been treated, myself included. Don't smirk at me ever again. Ever. Do you hear me? Okay, okay. Th thank you, Christine. Yeah, there, there it was. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. 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 Again, yeah. if... You should resign there. Wait, wait. Respect, please, resign. please. Uh, yes. Everyone, please be respectful. Hey, hey, please, please. Thank you. Again, still Michelle Lavoie, 16 Westwood. Michelle, I'd, step back a little bit from the mic. Yeah, okay, yep, well. sorry. I, I didn't get to finish. So um, thank you to everyone who apologized. At that, that really makes me feel better because taking accountability for your actions or your inaction is important. However, some people still need a formal knowledge of what an apology looks like. You might want to watch the tape because I think Amanda Drew pretty much schooled everybody on that. Um, and I just wanted to say, you know, the, the, sorry, the people that are saying we need to brush this under the rug, we will still stand behind our convictions because our integrity cannot be squashed by the lack of support or accountability of others. I mean, that's what freedom is all about, right? Standing up and using our voice. Um, and I know a lot of stuff has been read about this policy and I'm just a citizen here, but I would like this 
town council to consider a formal change to the flag can only fly once policy because I think that all the thin lines, if you're going to fly the, the red line flag, all the thin line flags were actually started after the blue line flag. So they're all, they're, they all mean the same thing for those particular um, public servants. And I think that you, they should all be flown when, God forbid, we lose a public servant who is serving all of us under those flags. They sh there shouldn't have to be a vote. It should just happen. If you're going to keep the policy the same. I would also like to formally request that the town council consider to fly the thin blue line flag for May 11th through May 17th, which is National Police Week, which includes 515 Peace Officers Memorial Day, and on January 9th, National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, further public comment? Yes, sir, name and address again, please. Hello, uh, Mark Rich, 199 Wells Road. I learned my lesson last time by not going last, so now I'm going again. Um, so um, I just wanted to kind of say how inspired I was by uh, Councillor, <coughs> excuse me, Councillor Dirk and uh, Councillor Bailey when um, they stood up and had that handshake and kind of had that moment together. That that made me feel like my favorite thing about being, my favorite thing about life is new beginnings. And that just felt like a brand new beginning and it felt great and it felt like what America is about and it made me smile and it made me happy. And I really appreciate you guys for doing that and being two great men for standing up there and shaking hands like that. Um, and I also, um, I also just, I kind of thought about like an inconsistency I said when I was up here earlier. I didn't, I don't think it's fair that people who voted against that flag were painted as people who are against law enforcement or anyone in that regard. But it's also not fair that people who, who have a different meaning for that flag are assumed as people who don't like anyone um, in the LGBTQ plus community or anything like that or a racist like that's not fair to assume right off the bat we need to listen to people and understand more before we make any assumptions like that and I was thinking and over the past few weeks I kept trying to look it up but whenever I would look it up like this situation was in the news so much that like I could not find anything that wasn't like a news story on this but and this is not a rhetorical question I was wondering like I know we have the first responder flag but are there any, like, do we have specific, like, Weathersfield Police Department or Weathersfield Fire Department, like, Weathersfield, like, those department flags, or no? Um, we don't respond, but we can, the town manager can get back to you after the meeting, but we, we don't engage, like, back and forth, but we can get back to you with an answer. To that. Okay, okay. Well, us, I don't know if there are, but I couldn't find any, but I feel like to circumvent this issue in the future, we should all come up with, like, flags that are specifically for, for the Weathersfield Police Department, the fire department, or the first responder. I know we have the first responders flag, but like just like flags for everyone. So we could, we all like, we'll never have a disagreement about that if we want to fly flags for those, for another situation like this in the future. So I just think like maybe we should all come together as a community and get, if we don't have the flags, get great artists and great people from all those fields and we can create new flags to to get rid of this issue in the future so like we've all said it, it kind of tore us apart for a second and we need to bring ourselves back together and maybe that could be a cool idea uh thank you guys thank you mark uh any further before we wrap up public comment does anybody if i don't see any i'm going to we do not have executive session tonight I'm going to ask item Q. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you.